Hello everyone, and welcome to our fifth installment of the ARC 5 live readings. We're on time today. Two days in a row, look at that. Nearly 100 people are in here. How are all you guys doing today? We're going to be reading chapters 15 through 17. And before we get started, like always, we're going to introduce the cast and crew, and then we're going to get right on into the readings. So without further delay, let's get everybody introduced, and we can get started. So let's go right from the top and then go down. Al, you are up first, my friend. Yep. Uh, yo, I'll be doing Al, what's up? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ali PA, and I'll be voicing Anastasia. Hello, I'm Kiki 484 And I'll be voicing Beatrice, I suppose. Hello, I'm Tealdi, and I'll be doing Krush again. Uh, hello, I'm Dread, and I'll be voicing uh, someone. You'll see. Hello, I'm Kyles, uh, I guess also Kyles McGiles, and I'm your Amelia. Hey everyone, I'm Gold, and I'll be voicing Felix uh, today. Jace, you can go ahead and introduce yourself before I go. Oh, yeah, what's up? Uh, I'm Jace, I'm just going to be the directing the sound and stuff. Hey guys, Holographic here, be voicing Julius. Hey, I'm the Lightning Eagle. I'm here for all the analysis. Hi, I'm Wolf, also known as Wolfclaw, and I voice Natsuki Subaru and make fun of holographic. Pog. Hey, I'm Kanda. I'm voicing Otto, and I'm glad I wasn't at the start of this because I literally coughed on my water, so I'm glad <laughs> my name starts with an O and I'm all the way down here. Hi, I'm off, and I'll be voicing Priscilla Barriel. Yo, I'm Pat Carley, and I will be voicing the OP knight, Reinhard von Estrella. Hi, I'm Purple, and I'll be voicing Wilhelm. Alright, cool. If you guys want to follow along with us, there is a new link in the description. Uh, if you guys go ahead and click on that link, it'll take you to a brand new PDF file, which contains the revised version of ARC 5, which we will be reading. Um, fair warning, it does have... Uh, anywhere from chapter 1 through chapter 19, I believe. We're only going up to 17 today. Uh, thank you, the new channel member already, Nick Tram, and Roman Morales with the $10 pog. So, yeah. If you want to start at the same chapter as us, go to page 227 yes. in the document. Travel uh, down. Quick question. Yes. Uh, I'll be voicing Felt, correct? Yes, right? that is correct. I'll be covering her. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So, we have everything settled out and ready to go. And we will be starting on page 227 if you download this document. Uh, yeah, without further delay, I think we can all get started. Everybody's ready to go. I'm ready. Yep. Thanks, Kondo. <laughs> Appreciate you, bud. Sure, that's okay. All right, let's get ready. right into it. Go are you narrating this one? Marrying the next one. I can do this one as well if you want. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, Arc 5, Chapter 15, A Deafening Silence. The next morning, a bleary-eyed Subaru stood in the sunlit courtyard. Feeling the hard gravel and sand through his shoes, he took a deep breath of the, cold, the cool morning air. Amelia directed a smile at the police Subaru as he gave her a relaxed, Mmm. What is it? Subaru seems happy today. Did something nice happen? <laughs> Many nice things happened. An important event happened last night. Amelia's charming braid was an unexpected treat. And the baths were spacious and comfortable. Uh, I can say the same. I also took a very comfortable bath yesterday. The bathhouse in Roswell's mansion is great. But the bath surrounded by stones here is so fresh. Last night, the beauty of Amelia's melodiously flowing silver hair, as the braids too red made, was unraveled, had been breathtaking. Although her usual long straight hair also showed her frosty, snow-like beauty, seeing an unusual hairstyle on her had her own sense of privilege. The conclusion really was that, no matter what, the cute girl would always be cute. With that in mind, Sue returned his attention back to the present as Amelia spoke again. Although indoors, the bath went as far as it could, it 
it could to resemble an open-air bath, and the decorations evoked a natural image of outdoors. A cobblestone covered the ledges along the bath's wall. If it had been of marble instead, the bath would have lost much of its uniqueness. Since I saw this type of bath for the first time, I ended up having a lot of fun frolicking with Krishan and Felchon. That's a prime fan service scene from a Garayu game. Oh, it's a CG that's absolutely necessary to collect. The G? <laughs> it's nothing. I was just teasing you. You seem happily, and most importantly, did you enjoy it? Mm-hmm. Very. Amelia, whose happiness was shared with Subaru, also seemed joyful at a glance. This feeling alleviated the initial anxiety and suspicion that had, uh, had accompanied both the master and servant on the trip to Priscilla. The issue was... Oh, those two over there have such unhappy, gloomy-looking faces. It's nothing, in fact. Please don't mind me. I just had a little too much to drink. The ending where Subaru was pointing was a lolly sporting twin drills and a frosty expression on her face, and a man whose usually elegant features were pale. Needless to say, these two were Beatrice and Otto. After some careful consideration, Subaru decided to say hello to the almost transparent Otto. Otto? You were a no-show at dinner yesterday. Where'd you go? Like I said when we parted ways, it's rare for me to have a chance to come to Priscilla, and while we're here, I wanted to establish some connections. What's up with you? You're even more drunk than when we first met! Uh... My memory might be messed up, but my first meeting with Mr. Natsuki didn't seem to involve alcohol. <sighs> well, it's your own memory, so think what you will. Otto, who was a uh, reproached for an unknown reason, wore a helpless expression, although Subaru's comments were all moot. Um, from Subaru's perspective, he had numerous first meetings with Otto, but the first one had been with a frustrated Otto in a tavern, who had been as equally as pale as the current one. Shortly afterwards, however, Subaru returned from death. Therefore, from Otto's point of view, the first meeting had been the embarrassing one in which Subaru had been responsible for saving him from the witch cult. Of course, it was futile to argue, since both ha would be wrong. Don't do things that would give Bayako bad habits. Ah, uh, well, I can understand that you were in a rush to help our faction. Hey, I did this all of my own volition. Even though I have no idea why I did this to myself. Otto, whose head seemed to be feeling rather heavy, was unable to respond to Subaru. After a moment, he looked up in the courtyard, changing the course of the conversation with them. Actually, what happened to Garfield? It's unusual he's not up at this time. Isn't it convention for him to get up earlier than anyone so he can find the highest mountain to howl from? Ah, uh, there's probably not anywhere high up here. Ugh, but that isn't why he's not here. Though, that would be his own juvenile secret. Please be gentle with him the next time you meet. To someone who has no idea whatsoever as to what happened, aren't those words a little too misleading? Ah, uh, my head still hurts. <sighs> You're certainly self-destructive. Watching a nigh comatose Otto collapse on the floor, Subaru smiled. He then turned around and looked at Beatrice, who had been silent since the beginning of their exchange. So, what's up, Echo? Yesterday you were so lively, but now you're all gloomy. That's so not cute. Don't just assume things, I suppose. I'm not feeling gloomy, in fact. Betty just suddenly remembered a few things, which she had to carefully scrutinize, I suppose. What's the matter? If you have any trouble, Spit it out. If it's something dangerous, you might not know how to handle it. Surprised at what Beatrice had said, Subaru narrowed his eyes slightly and gave a gesture indicating his readiness. Amelia also nodded as if she were listening carefully. Beatrice bit her lips, revealing a rare hesitation before choosing her words with a pompous air. It started yesterday, after Subaru abandoned me to play with Garfield, in fact. A uh, questionable interpretation, but go on. Betty had gone to look for Amelia to kill time with, I suppose. On the way to her room, I ran into an employee, who I made a little bit of small talk with, in fact. Bearco? Making small talk? 
Learning that Beatrice's ability to communicate had somewhat improved left Subaru speechless. He turned to Amelia, shocked, and she gave an eager nod. Incredible! The notion of Beatrice initiating conversations with strangers was entirely unexpected. Maybe the freshness of travel had let Beatrice experience an unexpected growth. After returning home, he needed to update the Bioko, the Bayako growth diary with the development as soon as possible. The diary, which recorded Bayako's uh, daily growth in detail, had already reached three volumes. Thanks to the journey, he could add a new page. Unaware that her daily activities were being recorded, Beatrice found Subaru and Amelia's attention annoying and re reacted with a dissatisfied, You're exaggerating, I suppose. I'll keep talking, in fact. When the waiter saw Betty, he said he had news and put on a very mysterious expression, I suppose. He told me, at night, something scary will haunt this hotel, in fact. Huh? Honestly, when Betty, heard she, when Betty heard, she hesitated to tell anyone, so as to not create unnecessary confusion, I suppose. Although, I still decided to do some preparation last night as a precaution, in fact. Beatrice's voice rose as she became worked up, and she did not notice how Subaru had fallen silent. Then, she dropped her voice to a whisper, as ceremoniously as if she were spreading a little-known secret. In the middle of the night, Betty heard something strange, I suppose. I didn't want to wake up Subaru, who had a stupid expression on his face as he slept, so I quietly left our sleeping quarters alone to investigate, in fact. You shouldn't stare at someone else's sleeping face. It's creepy. Uh, of course I didn't stare, I suppose. I just had a glance, as a lady's etiquette dictates, in, in fact. She might not have looked at the sleeping Subaru at all, but it was so cute that Subaru put the matter aside for a time being. Bayako took Subaru's acquiescence as a sign to continue, and her mysterious expression reappeared. Betty noticed an unusual presence hovering near the hotel, so I tracked it, I suppose. After a while, I finally found its source on the front porch. You... found it? Well, there was a dangerous pale face slowly emerging from the darkness, I suppose. It seemed to be dangerous to Betty at a first look, so I... So she confronted it, in fact. Beatrice's petite forehead shone faintly with sweat, as if she were fully immersed in the grim situation she had been involved in last night. Although she did not understand how the spirit's life plans worked, it made the atmosphere rather tense, so he chose not to comment on it. Shortly after, probably due to its fear of Betty's power, the figure slowly melted back into the darkness, I suppose. After repeating confirming that there will be no trouble later, Betty returned to the room, in fact. Then I stopped over the idiotically sleeping Subaru to return to the futon, I suppose. Don't peep on someone sleeping! It's indecent! I only confirmed that you were okay, I suppose! Absolutely no such thing like touching your forehead or eyebrows happen, in fact! This was certainly a self-admission, but because it was so cute, Subaru again neglected to mention it. All in all, that seemed to be the end of Beatrice's horror story. Subaru held his chin and nodded slightly as he began to consider what she had said. In a Japanese-style inn, a ghost story had occurred. As a matter of fact, after living in this other world for a year, Subaru had come to realize that such ghost stories were not widespread here. That was most likely because spirits were already well known as invisible beings. If the existence of invisible beings was acknowledged, then there was no need for such things like ghost stories. Even so, that kind of weird rumor still existed here, and that the hotel had been inherited a story about Japanese-style ghosts was rather incredible. Subaru heartily admired this phenomenon as he took a conclusive breath. Ah, <sighs> so, what happened last night, Otto? Ah, uh, I remember now. As I lie on the porch, still on the verge of vomiting, I noticed that Beatrice was staring at me but I was unable to speak at the time. Finally, I couldn't hold back and went to vomit in the bushes, and once I'd come back, she'd vanished. That would be it, then. How is this? How is this possible, in fact? It was almost too much for Beatrice to handle. It was, at this point, incredibly obvious that the true face of the so-called Spectre was actually a drunk Otto, and she had no idea what to say. 
What she had been certain she had seen was relentlessly rejected, and Beatrice looked as if her ability to reason had vanished. Subaru stroked her as though comforting her, but in his heart he concluded that Beatrice was bad at sleeping on familiar surroundings. The waiter, he just described the specter to Beatrice, and surely seen that Beatrice had the unusual aura of someone who was gullible, and would take any kind of prank too seriously. Her red face, full of remorse and dissatisfaction, was so adorable that Subaru gave it to the highest level of praise. Yo, everyone's gathered here already. Then, a light female voice cut into the crowd of laughter. Looking to see the source of the sound, Subaru spotted a figure in the corridor. A girl shaking out her short, short golden hair, felt. She had replaced Yukata with her usual light attire, swinging her slender arms with ease. Although she had grown to be a touch more feminine, she looked like she was still firmly rooted as a girl from the streets. Morning! Oh, you're dressed so casually. <laughs> I could just feel Reinhardt's lament. Uh-oh. You need me okay. to step in for ya? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and said that, there's that thing I've been curious about. What? Where, where was that line? I think he skipped the line. Yeah. <laughs> it's don't oh, sorry, guys. What line are we? Uh, okay, oh. we're all pausing for a second. Weren't we just <laughs> doing the line after Subaru's morning? You're dressed so casually, I can just feel Reinhardt's lament. Aren't we doing it after that? Yes, that's the one, yeah. We are. Kyle's was in the wrong spot. <laughs> Alright, oh here we go. Oh my gosh. Don't preach! 333? <laughs> don't preach me about it. That guy annoys me with it so much. Even Ramji is on his side. It's such a bother. Voicing her dissatisfaction, an impatient felt leapt from the corridor and landed beside Otto, who was promptly ignored. She then turned towards Subaru and crooked her head to ask, Having said that, there's a thing that I've been curious about. What is it? Ah, that is to say... Why have you all been doing this weird dance together? Belt wore a curious expression as she watched Subaru's strange dance, his everyday habit of morning radio gymnastics. Whether before starting a long journey or taking a few steps on the road, everyone would start the morning with radio calisthenics. This scene had long appeared every morning in not only the Roswell Mansion, but across the entirety of the Mather territories. Oh, it's just the secret to health and longevity, performed by everyone, from the children to the elderly. The age of the popular radio calisthenics of healthly healthiness will reign. After Amelia Tab becomes the ruler, our radio gymnastics will become a government mandated morning activity. Yeah, I'd be happy if everyone could do it together. That's... I can't help but feel that. If such a thing becomes reality, the ruler's reputation will be ruined. Scrutinizing their movement, Felt muttered her cynical thoughts. It was saddening to see, but sooner or later, even those who had not wanted to follow along were drawn into it after realizing the benefits of this easily performed activity. The popularity of this movement, after it has, seen, it has spread to the various villages, was indeed high. Beko and Otto were also reluctant from the very beginning, but now they even participate, despite having suffered for a lonely night of fear and ghosts, or a morning of a hangover. Betty was dragged into this by Subaru, in fact. I obviously just wanted to sleep off my headache, but then I heard the clasps and saw all the dancing. Even if I become sick of this, I'm addicted. Utterly fascinating. Beatrice and Otto gave a somewhat weak explanation, while Subaru and Amelia stood proud. Felt scratched her white neck as she pondered their two distinctly different sets of responses. 
Indeed. I often hear of popular, strange activities happening in Onichan's vicinity. Strange dances, hollowed out pumpkins, women carefully baking food for their beloved as a gift. Events like that? Although they're, they're only unique occurrences in the border territories, I know that one day it will be turned into a project popular across the nation. Considering this, we could try to use Anastasia Sun in our schemes. Valentine's Day would revolutionize the snack industry and the markets would broaden. If the topic of large economical shift came up, Anastasia would immediately find a way to capitalize on it. If it wasn't too late to do that, she would consider trying to catch Anastasia in her free time to discuss those opportunities with her. Has Onichan always given off that kind of feeling? Well, Subaru has always been that way. It seems like he's teasing, but he really wants to improve things. Even if he always pretends to be fooling around. Yeah, but you don't even know if he's joking or not until the dust settles. Amelia's answer slightly frightened felt. Occasionally, this kind of thing would happen due to Amelia's mental age. Sometimes it'd be hard to tell which one was younger or older. And Felt was no exception to that. Felt, who struggled and crawled their way up in the slums, had her unique way of living, too. Why is Felt Sean all alone? Isn't Reinhard worried when you're not together? I'm not some kid who needs to be taken care of. And besides, that guy's just annoying when he's near me, so I just told him to go off somewhere, since Onechan and everyone else would be here. It's so annoying. As soon as anything happened, that bastard arrives at the blink of an eye. Right. Then, I feel at ease. Amelia carelessly chuckled at Felt's complaint. Receiving a response which did not match her expectations, Felt gave an anxious sigh and began playing roughly it with her blonde hair, revealing her irritation. felt -chan, you have such beautiful hair. You shouldn't play with it so crudely. I've been taught by Subaru and Frederica-san to respect hair. Damn, you're so bossy. Let me mind my own hair, and I didn't say to stop adding Chan to my name. It gives me goosebumps. Even if you say so, I can't drop this habit all at once. I'll try my best, but if I can't hold back, I'll be very sorry. Is that fine? It's not in the slightest. Because Millie did not hold any maliciousness, Elf could only give a low, cat-like growl to vent her irritation. On a surface level, people hearing their conversation would smile, this looked like a happy exchange between best friends. Well, our radio calisthenics are done, so feel free to go to bed. Or you could take a bath, they're nice and refreshing. I've already taken a bath, but sadly, the smell of liquor didn't seem to wash away. <laughs> Before Garfiel shows up to yell at you, you best hurry and wash it away. In my hometown, there's a saying that any issue can be solved with a few hot baths. It would be a catastrophe if he saw me like this. Since you gave me your advice, I'll follow it while I still have my life. Hubert lifted the depressed Otto to his feet and gave his weak shoulder a pat. Otto sighed, still despondent, as Super gazed up at the sky. A sky full of smiles. Thin clouds hung in the early morning sky, reflecting the calm weather. Just as Super came to note this... Good morning, citizens of Pristella. Huh? A loud sound seemingly appeared out of thin air, echoing in everyone's ears, surprisingly unprepared Subaru. It was no illusion. As Subaru looked around in panic, he saw Amelia, Felt, and Beatrice also glancing around, alarmed. Hey, what's this? Oh, it's a really loud voice. It's not some kind of fantasy, it's just a loud voice in the streets. Felt whispered softly to herself, while Subaru also made his own commentary, while suspecting that it was not unrelated to magic. Speaking of magic that could send sound to an entire group of people, Subaru recalled the spell that made it possible to share one's consciousness. Necked, that Subaru had used before to connect everyone's consciousness. However, it was simply a way of connecting people mentally within a limited range, and could not deliver sound directly to the ears. Pondering this, Subaru thought he had found a suitable answer that was... Something like... a loudspeaker? Both and Subaru had provided similar comments on the phenomenon, talking about a loud voice. It was sounding from the sky, the noise was loud enough that the entire city was probably able to hear it, in a very similar way to announcements made from a loudspeaker. The only problem was that, in this world, there have been no sign of such scientific and technological developments so far. Ah, uh, you didn't know? 
This broadcast functions with the help of a mana-powered instrument in Priscilla's Metropolitan Government Hall. Mana. So it's magic! Otto answers to his question, nodding as, as if to say... Yes. What I heard yesterday, when I was drinking with a great variety of people, was that every morning the City Hall would use a magic device to deliver an announcement to the citizens of Pristella. Huh? That's such a strange daily routine. Information that needs to be conveyed to all of the city's areas can be heard immediately and conveniently. In the event of an emergency, evacuations or directions can be given easily. In order to keep such a stressful time from being too chaotic, doing this every morning allows the citizens to get used to the speaker. Oh. I wouldn't have thought of that. Using a magical device to prepare for emergencies. Small villages were trouble enough, but if an accident took place in the city, handling it would quickly devolve into pandemonium. It was never a waste to come up with a preemptive countermeasure to deal with such problems in advance. It was unusual and fairly innovative for someone to take the time to ensure that the citizens would be well prepared for it. Looks like a pretty smart guy is responsible for this. Maybe the mayor? No. It seems that it was Kiritaka-san who provided the magical device in the first place, and came up with the habit of using it for broadcasts. So, it's only natural that he's involved with the management of the city. <sighs> His admiration was suddenly interrupted by that impact. Kiritaka had most likely been the one who'd yelled, Don't touch my Liliana! Yesterday, scenes of the negotiation flashed through Subaru's mind. The screaming, the flash of the magical stone, the elegant man who cried for Liliana afterward. Oh no, no. <sighs> no way, in fact. It seems a little... At Subaru, Beatrice, and Amelia's perfect synchronization, Otto smiled wryly. I thought that you would reply like that, but the person in charge of the broadcast is in fact Kiritaka-san. Listen, isn't that voice familiar? This is a magical device which can transmit my voice throughout the entire city. If I startled anyone unfamiliar with this, I offer my apologies. You're very lucky to be hearing this broadcast today. Huh? Who's that? Despite Otto's follow-up, Subaru still had difficulty associating with his voice with his impression of Kiritaka. He was so serious that it did not sound like a lollicon at all. No. Wait. Kleinson also doesn't seem like a degenerate. Could it be that lollicons are clever at disguising themselves? Lollicons with high social status are terrifying. Nubu again recalled the omnipotent butler. He had overwhelming intelligence and ability, but it was mixed with a kind of helpless inclination. Although it wouldn't be quite right to call Clin the representative of all lollicons, it wasn't impossible that there would be a case of a high-class lollicon who resembled him. Ugh, well, this Kiritaka guy is still very suspicious. And impressions from voices aren't the most reliable. And to those who are listening, allow me to deliver, filled with my feelings, no, filled with your feelings, a world of blessings. The morning has finally come. This is a songstress, Liliana. Please be sure to listen. Ah, uh, it's me! In the midst of the mess, the man in Super's memories and the man making the broadcast finally aligned. This father had decided to plague Subaru even in the early morning. You hear the shuffling sound of people changing locations, and then a slight cough which seemed to contain a smile. Haha! <laughs> well! Hello everybody! This is Liliana, who was just introduced! Doing this every morning makes me feel the weight of expectation, but I still want to do my best to sing and play and to create joy! Please oblige me! Subaru immediately recognized Liliana's characteristic way of speaking, and it felt as if he could see her odd behavior even through the magical device. Curiously, unlike Kiritaka's voice, which intermittently faded through the magical device, not a, train, not a trace of Liliana's voice was lost. She did not know if there was such a concept of an affinity for magical devices, but if there were any such blessings, those would suit the girls whose voice was led by the goddess of song, so she would be able to sing clearly through the static. Well, I'm eager to sing. Please listen. The Sword Demon's Love Song, Act 2. Liliana inhaled gently as she prepared her instrument before playing it. The song's title stole Subaru's attention from Liliana's speech. If the song was indeed the tale of who he thought it was, then the song was about to be played was a tragic love story about a woman and a demon who lived by the sword. 
the songstress Liliana's act of terrorism ended with her song, and Subaru returned to the living room for an early breakfast. To be honest, the existence of the Sword Demon's love song had struck Subaru like an unexpected bolt of lightning. He should have realized long ago, no matter in, the wo which, in which world, at any time, any heroic deeds that had been accomplished would be preserved for future generations. They could be documented in a number of ways, such as writings or paintings. It was not inconceivable that the heroine who had ended a civil war and the sword demon who took that heroine as his wife were immortalized in song. Of course, even if Super had been aware of this possibility, he could not have done anything regarding what would have happened in the morning. He had not known about the magical device, and he could not have known to tell Liliana to think about her actions. Now he could only curse the songstress who had chosen her song at the most inopportune time without any regard for the situation. An already poor impression of the songstress had somewhat plummeted, plummeted even further and her inexplicably poorly timed enthusiasm. Liliana was an idiot. Hirotaka was a fool. Has Wilhelm's son come here yet? The earliest to arrive in the living room were the previous occupants of the courtyard, with the expectation of Felt, who had parted with them after leaving. She would probably come later with Reinhard. Thinking of the song he had just heard, recalling Wilhelm's thoughts on his wife and grandson, and picturing the old man's smile, Subaru was unable to express the feelings that had sprung up from his chest. As for the words of say upon seeing him, Subaru had no idea how to find them. Even so, as long as there was communication, Subaru would be glad. Still, he seriously hoped that Willem had somehow missed the song. Ugh, that group of overly serious people. It's impossible that all of them would be sleeping in on the same day. Three main members of Crush's faction, and even Ferris, worked and rested on a balanced schedule. Even having lived with them only a few days, Subaru was well aware of this. On a journey to an unfamiliar place, they would probably be nervous and maintain their schedule even more rigorously so it's impossible that they would have missed the broadcast. Nubaru, you look awful. What's wrong? Lilia leveled her gaze at Subaru, who sat on a cushion, rapidly tapping his feet in anxiety. After the broadcast had ended, Subaru had immediately proposed that their faction should go to see the tea room. Um, after confirming that the tea room was empty, he claimed its undisturbed peace. Emilia and the others simply savored the tragic lyrics of the sword demon's love song and indulged in Liliana's voice. They were unaware that the sword demon recorded in song was Wilhelm, or of any of the origins of the sword demon. Therefore, it was no wonder that they could not emphasize the Subaru's anxiety. Even more frightening was that Liliana's song had captured even Subaru. Subaru, who had been plagued with a sense of trepidation upon hearing the song's title, could not bring himself to leave the courtyard, court, courtyard while listening to it. Or rather, that kind of thought did not even surface at the time. Liliana's singing must have contained magic. Because of this, even after recovering, Subaru could not shake off the sense of anxiety when listening, when thinking of that hasty brunette. It, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. Just, I'm a little hungry. Uh, you see, even though the inn's food is delicious, isn't it uh, lacking in quantity? My body wants to just pill for snacks so I can eat them and grow. Subaru, I don't believe you. Although she was usually easily deceived, Amelia saw right through Subaru's bluff at this critical moment. Was he so easy to read? Subaru's confidence vanished. <sighs> really, Natsuki-san? Although I don't know what you're anxious about, we're discussing our plans for the afternoon. You should be paying close attention. This afternoon's plan? Oh, yeah! The second negotiation with Kiritaka. Hmm. Could we take Liliana hostage so we can exchange her? With the magic stone we want? Why in the world would you propose such a forceful plan? Otto, amazed by Subaru's words, raised his voice as his face adopted a gloomy expression. Seeing that, Subaru tilted his head with an Eh? Perhaps it was due to his still burning anger towards Liliana, but it probably wouldn't serve to raise the plan's success rate. In any case, this afternoon we'll be attempting negotiations with Kiritaka-san again. And the one we should try to win the trust of is that member of the Scales of the White Dragon, who is the most likely person able to persuade Kiritaka. Scales of the White Dragon? That's such a cool name! Was he at the meeting yesterday? Yes, the Scales of the White Dragon are a well-known mercenary group in this area. Although they were established a long time ago, they were recently hired as a private force by Kiritaka himself. 
That man was a representative. Of the people who were there. Ah, uh, he's probably the best person to talk to. Well, I'd not been in... Had not been there to observe the room the negotiation had take place in. Super had a vague recollection of the presence of the middle-aged man in white before the magic stone's light engulfed him. Compared to Kiritaka, who was mad for Liliana, who was often in a state of madness herself, Super was certainly eager to talk to someone more rational than the two. Judging by this morning's broadcast, Kiritaka-san's anger should have calmed down somewhat, and he should be willing to listen to us. However, if Natsuki-san's going to be present, then he will be significantly less reasonable, most likely. I know my scary eyes put people off the first time they see me, but I didn't expect such an aggressive reaction. That kind of hurt. It's okay, Subaru. I don't like those fierce-looking eyes. My mother also had fierce eyes, but she was such a gentle person. Subaru's face isn't that bad, in fact. Actually... I was mistaken, I suppose. No, comfort is preferable, actually. Don't make me face the truth. Subtle bore the gentle and stern words of the two women before urging Otto to continue. Otto went on saying, So, during today's negotiations, I think Natsuki-san shouldn't accompany us. Is that okay? Uh, no matter what, I don't have a choice but to agree. But, if you succeed... Then what's the point of me being here? Between having just N Mr. Natsuki come for nothing and having all of us come for nothing, we should choose the smaller loss of just you, who only runs around playing with Beatrice. I feel like you're, under you're underestimating Betty, in fact. It's annoying, I suppose. Beatrice's anger was dismissed, and their plan of action was finalized for the time being. Nevertheless, Super had also considered what Otto was likely thinking. Then... This afternoon, I'll go with Amelia time to take a walk with Beiko. Eh? I won't be going to see Kiritaka-san with Otto-kun? They have surely anticipated that we would come to negotiate again, and if we were able to take Amelia, we would be making a sudden, unannounced visit, and we'll fail just as we did yesterday. Natsuki-san, I'm glad you realized this, but I can't help but think that you're up to something. Otto glared at Sue. Subaru, who responded with an innocent whistle. It told Otto about meeting Liliana yesterday, but he neglected to mention where they had met. And Kiritaka had most likely predicted that the Amelia camp would be looking to negotiate again. Now, what would Kir Kiritaka do with Liliana if he did not want to meet Subaru and the others? The clue was Liliana's actions on the previous day. I found a nice park, and I'd like Amelia Tan to come with me. We could take a stroll with Beatrice holding our hands between us. Wow, that sounds like fun. But I wonder if it's okay for us to relax like that. Well, auto kun I can't refuse if you stare at me with such expecting eyes. Well, Mr. Natsuki and Amelia-sama both can't attend due to a variety of circumstances, so I'll visit the other party with Garfield. Please don't cause me any trouble. In affirmation of Otto's words, Amelia and Subaru nodded earnestly. But Subaru also stuck his tongue out at Otto's back as an apology. Liliana would almost certainly not be present at the Muse Chamber of Commerce today. In that case, Subaru could only assume that she would go to the same park as yesterday. If she were not to be found there, Subaru would accept that there was nothing he could do, but he still wished to establish a relationship with her if he could. If Kiritaka truly loved Liliana from the bottom of his heart, there is quite a large possibility that he would agree to a direct request from her. Of course, he wasn't just thinking of using Liliana. If he abused her good attentions, Amelia would oppose it, and Subaru's own conscience wouldn't let him walk free. Thus, Subaru decided to tell Liliana his story without any reservations. Subaru hoped that the result would be on it, even if he strayed from the heroic biography that he had been expecting and ended up disappointing her. Mortalized in history as a hero, in song, this thought gave Subaru goosebumps. But if he had to add fuel to the fire, he wanted to leave an honest impression. At the very least, his audience would be disillusioned by Subaru's pain to broke teeth on learning of his visible mistakes along the way. Good morning. You're all up early. Just as Emilia's faction decided on their internal and external plan of actions, the door of the tea room was opened, revealing the figure of Anastasia. Today's Anastasia wore her usual fox scarf coupled with a kimono. It was indeed a surprise to suddenly see kimono, and Subaru was excited. Emilia's eyes gleamed for a different reason, 
she's delighted to see the unusual clothing, and Astasia gazed at them with pride. Very nice, very nice. I'm glad to be shocking people so early in the morning. Anastasia-san, that dress is so beautiful! Is that what you were talking about yesterday? Yep, this is the kimono I mentioned at the bath yesterday. Although it looks a lot like a yukata, it takes a lot of preparation to wear. Anastasia turned delightedly, showing off her blue, co uh, blue dyed clothing, which is charmingly patterned with flo floating, scattered petals. He never ceased to be amazed at Kuragi's ability to recreate the Japanese style, and what he had thought to be nearly certain now turned out to be certain. Kuragi clearly shared much with the Japanese culture Subaru was familiar with. That type of clothing, has it been handed down from generation to generation? Well, you're quite knowledgeable, Natsuki-kun. This type of clothing did s seem to be more common at the time of Hoshin, though that mention of production was temporarily lost, and only in the past decade or so did craftsmen start being able to reproduce them. Hoshin's era. This mysterious man, Ocean of the Wastelands, appeared once again. Now Subaru had no choice but to suspect that Hoshin, like Subaru and Al, had been summoned. However, unlike Subaru and Al, Hoshin had been from 400 years ago. The priority is figuring the current situation out, but afterward, I might want to take a good look at this Hoshin. On the matter of his summoning, Subaru did not intend to start digging for the knowledge at this point. He did not know anything about this mechanism of summoning, nor did he know about the purpose of the summoner. However, this call, this call was one-sided, only attracting him to this place. There was no such convenience that would allow him to go back home. On this matter, just considering it would be like fishing for the moon in the puddle, there was no solution. What Tsuru wanted to know was that what his predecessors he had had, what kind of footprints they had left in this world, and where they had ended up, nothing more. Good morning, Subaru. Did you sleep well last night? You were a great help in reminding Feltsama to return to her room this morning. Oh, annoying. It wasn't my intention to go back there. After Anastasia, Reinhard strode in the tea room with Felt and Toe. He deposited her on a cushion, giving no indication of whether he had heard the song that morning or had. He certainly must have known that the Sword Demon's love song was referring to his own grandfather. Anastasia-sama. You look more beautiful with each passing morning. I had been a little concerned about your modesty, but now it seems unfounded. <laughs> this is my treasured possession. I can't go into Bristella without preparing myself. On that note, I still have to show off to Julius. After that, Julius also joined them, and as they showed off her guard to her knight. After she had receive, uh, received her due flattery, Anastasia tilted her head at him. Didn't Mimi and the others join you? Ricardo said he had something to do and went out to the city last night. But Mimi and her brothers, they seem to be following Garfield of the Amelia faction. Hmm? They're following Garfield? Amelia looked up upon hearing the name of one of her servants, and Julius nodded. Mimi found Garfield leaving the inn and immediately gave chase. Then Hetaro went after her, and Tivi, who cleans up their messes, said that he would handle it. So, they all left Joshua. Anastasia decided upon uh, descended upon Joshua with her hands on her hips, the latter hiding behind the tall Julius. The handsome young man bowed his head to his wrathful master as he stepped forward timidly, looking extremely pale and concerned. I, I am deeply, extremely sorry. I desperately tried to stop him, but Mimi and Hetero were not listening at all. Tivi said to please leave everything to him. Well, if Tivi's there, they shouldn't cause any problems. Let's put it aside. We're the hosts, but we're making quite a spectacle of ourselves in front of our guests. Patiently patting the same Joshua's shoulder in a sign of forgiveness, Anastasia turned to face everyone present with a gracious smile. She shook her supple hair, her fingers playing with her scarf. As you've just witnessed, this embarrassing fiasco was happening. I hope you'll excuse it. Our adorable deputy captain, seemingly distracted by her first love, is having a hard time fighting her impulses. Mimi was obsessed with Garfield and wanted to cling to his side. Everyone present could see this. Everyone, with two ex exceptions. Amelia had tilted her head in confusion, and Joshua issued a sigh of, So that's what that was. By the way, Fel, I didn't see that Tonchinkan trio at all. Are they all staying here? 
You mean Gaston and the others? Well, having them living here would be a waste and a joke. And they're so unused to places like this that they'd feel awkward. They're living somewhere near... more cheaper in the city, but... As she answered Tuba's question, Elk grinned, showing her teeth. Hey, that Tonjin Khan Nipkane, its nickname ain't so bad. Since their names are Gaston, Larkins, and Camberley, it doesn't confuse at all. They don't seem to mind it. <laughs> I also think it's a great nickname. I want to praise the me from a year ago. When I first heard their real names, I thought a miracle had happened. The Tonjin Khan Trio was what they had started as, and the Tonjin Khan Trio was where they had ended up being. A toast to the past self had been made there so for posterity. <sighs> we are late. It looks like we are the last ones here. Finally arriving in the tea room was Crush's faction. Today, she had uh, worked her long green hair up, and fitting of her new self wore gorgeous ladylike floral hairpin. She took a brief walk into the room, followed by Ferris and Wilhelm, who was, as always, solemnly dressed, his back upright. Looking at the old man's posture, Super couldn't help but shake his shoulders. He swallowed, trying to steal a glance at the old man's face and Wilhelm had caught Subaru's gaze. He showed a faint smile, giving a slight bow. Witnessing this action, Subaru received the message contained in the earlier smile. You have nothing to worry about. Subaru's heart began to beat faster, until he saw Ferris sitting at Crush's side, winking and giving a peace sign. No worries, we've taken care of it. That was the message Subaru received from Ferris. Perhaps he had no Subaru's attention. He ceased making his gestures and began to cling at to crush his side, as he always did. Subaru was conscious of what it was like to be useless, and was afraid of uh, appearing no nosy. Crush and Ferris certainly knew more than Subaru about the connection of between Wilhelm and those songs. They were more sensitive and had greater proximity with Wilhelm. That was natural, because they were his companions. Subaru did not need his worries. Ah, uh, better to say, that's our negligence that we couldn't help Garfiel. Not to say that he could not care about others. Rather, it is better to first do something for your own faction, which will leave you free to help out others. However, the turbulent depression in Garfield's body was something that could only over be overcome by Garfield's own efforts. So that line of thought would solve nothing. Well, there are still a few people who haven't shown up, but in all likelihood, they won't be coming. Clapping your hands, Anastasia declared so. Although the number of occupants was less than that of last night's attendees, the number was still impressive. After all, among what had happened last night, eating itself um, also had been very exciting. Oh, eating itself had also been very exciting. What to put on this morning? With a short pause of anticipation, Anastasia smiled and said, Bring it in! At her orders, an employee of the inn opened the door, and immediately afterward, a large heated block of iron was carried in by staff. Today's treat is the traditional Kawaragi breakfast, the Daisukiyaki pancake! Anastasia rolled her sleeves up slightly, raising her voice. In front of a silent crowd, the inn staff coated the iron with a layer of oil and carried an assortment of ingredients, one by one in the room. The Daisukiyaki pancake. From the name, the iron plate, and assortment of ingredients, Subaru saw something incredibly familiar, something called... A Japanese Okonomiyaki? As something had been passed down as daisukiyaki, the Japanese okono okonomiyaki pancake arrived on stage. Subaru, Subaru, look at my masterpiece! Subaru, this is the best pancake made by Betty, I suppose. You can have it, in fact. Amelia smiled earnestly, and Biaka's face was a little flushed. Each placed their best pancake in front of him. Each one a Daisukiyaki that had failed to become a Daisukiyaki. To Subaru, they were just charred blocks of black charcoal. The two, however, were completely unaware of their lack of skill, and Subaru did not disdainfully throw away their feelings. Uh, try it yourself before you recommend it to others? With this sensible suggestion, Subaru held back a look of pain as the two immediately started on their pancakes, and turned his attention to the other factions. Finished, Feltsama. Ooh, it's good. Make me some nor. I'm always grateful for your skills in cooking and making delicious sweets. If you can, if you count on me for anything else, I'll be living up to my honor as a knight. This was Felt's faction. Reinhardt made perfect pancakes in an impossible taste, and Felt gobbled them up just as fast. 
hidden somewhere in Felt's slim figure was King of Stomachs. Or she was just Artemis. Either way, she ate far more than her share. All in all, Reinhardt had yet to eat, while Felt had already polished off ten. Incidentally, Amelia's faction was faring awfully, as mentioned earlier. As had just been demonstrated, Amelia and Beatrice had not pulled their weight, and the only successful members were Otto and Subaru. Look, Amelia, Sama, and Beatrice Chan. I cooked them properly. Oh, eat this. Ah, Amelia. Self reflection is good, but don't eat them raw. Beatrice, that's too much sauce! Much thanks to Otto, who acted like a father, some aches could be avoided for a while. Of the other factions, the person that stood out the most was Anastasia. This was the surprise breakfast that she had planned herself. She had both deep confidence in herself and love for the Daisukiyaki. Watch carefully! This is the real Daisukiyaki! He flipped the pancakes neatly and smoothly and put beautifully made pancakes onto Julius's plate. I am unworthy of eating Anastasia-sama's food, but I think they would be better if they were cooked for a shorter amount of time. Of course, I do not mean to bother Anastasia-sama. Yeah, yeah, they need to be less charred. Even though Julius is a man, he speaks like a tender maiden. Unlike Subaru, who had redirected his offerings and told the people who had presented him with a gift to reflect on themselves, Julius not only ate the slightly burnt pancakes, but kept a straight face and gave Anastasia pointers to improve. That person was a role model as a knight. Subaru absolutely did not want to imitate him, and lacked the ability to do so anyway. Sitting at their side, eating sticky raw pancakes was Joshua, looking pitiful. His monocle seemed to be fogging over, preventing himself from seeing properly, and he desperately tried to hide his struggle. He would feel mortified to Subaru, who he hated, Notice, notice this embarrassing spectacle, so Subaru did not call out to him. After seeing the difference in elegance between the brothers, Subaru could not only conclude that the most stable factions was Crush's. Oh, Crush-sama! Fairy Chan made really beautiful pancakes! Take a look! Hmm, you certainly have, but I will not be defeated. Like a passionate competition between two women, Crush and Ferris converse. Their confidence was supported by the results. The pancakes they had made were perfect. Ferris had even added cat ears to his. Please enjoy my, my daisuke yaki. They're filled with Fairy Chan's love. Crush Sama, open wide. Hey, hey, that's, uh... Although the happy seemed to feel a little off-putting, that might have been because he knew they were man and woman, or because he knew that Crush's temperament had changed after a memory loss. Anyway... Masculine and Servant had appeared to have no problems. The last member of their pa faction, sitting next to the peach-colored space and focusing on his own pancake, was Wilhelm. Hmm. Wilhelm, who had been trying to turn the dough over, closed his eyes and sighed. It seemed that his pancake had been torn apart after Wilhelm had left it on the iron for too long, causing it to stick. He had unexpectedly seen Wilhelm's clumsy side. I feel like I saw something I shouldn't have. But, in that case... Feeling that he should help Wilhelm, Subaru climbed to his feet, then sat back down, reconsidering. He then nodded to Wilhelm. Wilhelm, son! Subaru, don't. Hearing his name, Wilhelm lifted his head. Noticing that Will Subaru had seen his clumsiness, his brow furrowed in shame. Subaru gave him an encouraging nod, and gently pointed to his neighbor with his jaw. Wilhelm, who understood his meaning, his meaning, swallowed quietly. Moving to the, pace, uh, the place indicated by Subaru, Wilhelm took a seat next to Reinhard. He beatily followed each of Felt's instructions, producing pancakes without halt and failing to notice uh, the exchange between Subaru and Wilhelm. Although Subaru had communicated everything he wanted to say to Wilhelm, consternation, confusion, hesitation, doubt, all wavered in Wilhelm's eyes. He took a long time to reach a decision, and finally. Right. Reinhardt froze as Wilhelm forced himself to call his grandson's name. The spatula hovered in midair as his hands got moving, and felt played the pancake with a perfect catch. That act was inelegant, but Reinhardt took no notice of it. The red haired youth faced Wilhelm with wide eyes. Wilhelm met his gaze head on, without so much as drawing breath. 
abruptly, silence fell. Not just between the two, but also between the people around who had noticed. The entire room still, and the only remaining sounds were those of Daisukiyaki burning on an iron plate. Time seemed to stagnate as everyone held their collective breaths. I, um, that is... What is it, Oji-sama? I... I... I am not so good at this. So, if you know any kind of trick to it, easy, to make it easy, could you teach it to me? Those were well and clumsy, stuttering words. Only Crush, Ferris, and Subaru widened their eyes, understanding what kind of resolve Wilhelm had needed to choke those words out. Wilhelm himself seemed to sag with exhaustion after posing the question. Wordlessly, Reiner swallowed as he considered how to answer. His fair features stilled as an unfamiliar emotion washed over his blue eyes. Reinhardt closed his eyes and buried that emotion into a sigh, then... Yes, I understand, Oji-sama. The corner of his mouth turned up as he closed his eyes. That expression could only be described as a smile. It was not the reassuring smile he usually wore to give others a sense of security. This may have been the only time anyone had seen the young man named Reinhard step out of his role as a sword saint and show a genuine smile. Wilhelm's dumbstruck expression slowly re reclaimed his exposure. Composure. He lo lowered his face, closed his eyes as if he were enduring something. He probably had difficulty processing the feelings immediately. However, the real genuine feeling was there. Once delivered, it only needed to be accepted. The long divide between the two, grandfather and grandson, could only be offset by a corresponding amount of time. Subaru, seeing such a possibility play out in front of him, clenched his fist with the plethora of emotions. From the bottom of his heart, he wanted to greet Wilhelm with joy and... Tread. Yeah. It will not be so easy, honored father. Don't think that your relationship will be fixed with just that. Suddenly, a red-haired figure threw open the sliding door of the tea room. The face of the red-haired man who had spoken those words carries so much malice that everyone froze on the spot, forgetting the flow of time. And that's the chapter. That is the end of the longest chapter we're reading today. That was 20,000 words long. Ooh. That was a <laughs> lot. I am that was so sorry, one. Gold. I forgot well done, I mixed everyone. up the two chapters. I, I do think we Gold should definitely not be narrating this next no, one. No, definitely. That one was so long. Yeah, definitely not. For yeah. sure. Um, Are you okay, Gold? You sounded a bit <laughs> dead after all that. No, I just, I I just started fumbling with all the narration at the end there. Yeah. Purple, can yeah. you get your audio scored away real quick? Uh, mm. Yeah, I think you just need to speak a bit louder. It's literally just oh. like that your voice is so deep it's that so it's deep, not it's picking, not picking up up. the beginning of your lines. <laughs> Purple, your voice is so perfect then, that it becomes imperfect. Then uh, I'll... Go ahead, best girl. Is... Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's just yeah, tell you. Yeah. Give me some grandfatherly advice and we'll just see how this goes. From my side, at least, so we can hear you. Well, always look both ways before crossing the street and uh, wipe your butt. Yeah, I is think you. Is this close enough for you? I think you just need to talk a bit louder. I, I honestly think that's what it is. Uh, understood. I'll try to enunciate better. No, no, your enunciation is fine. I think it's just. The compression because your voice is so low i'm actually a really soft-spoken kind of guy too oh, so... so okay let me pull let me turn you up then let me turn you up a bit i have you completely it was always, max you usually sounded fine at the end of your lines like the last half it's it's just like the first half that's like quieter i just want to make sure that this next part we can hear you because it's like important like however you did the last chapter yesterday just the same delivery, because that was perfect. But you're doing great, Purple. Oh, yeah. I'll yell at that red-haired bastard. Don't worry. Okay, perfect. That's what I like to hear. 
We got oh, a light novel. I'm loving, I'm loving the oh, yeah. chat here saying. I um, put them both up already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Light is asking Purple to tell him how to file his taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two light novel illustrations unlocked. We have the very wholesome scene with Reinhardt and, and Wilhelm. Very unwholesome arsehole. And then we have we have a dickhead McGee here. I'll, I'll turn <laughs> I'll turn off the live call so you guys can see him in all his glory. Oh, yeah. You see that bad power pose. Yeah, very vulnerable to the growing area, if I do say so myself. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be such a what shame a if someone bitch. kick him multiple <laughs> times in the dick, wouldn't it? It'd be such a shame. It would be such a dying shame. Uh, let me it check would be so see. Sad. One kick and it would end him. <laughs> 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 oh, just so you guys know, we are reading 17 as well today, and that is literally uh, Subaru and Julius. Romance time! Yes. Yeah! We'll give it a, oh god, we'll give it another five <laughs> minutes, and then we'll hop into the next chapter. I believe Konda's narrating this one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I need to go collect more water. Oh, shit. Okay, Wolf's going to the ether to collect stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go to the restroom. Okay, Conda's going to the little merchant's room. <laughs> and never coming back. <laughs> Nervous Wilhelm sounds adorable. Uh, <laughs> Heinkel has the most punchable face. He <laughs> really does. You really do. Punchable faces. I think Drad's voice is perfect for Heinkel because when I voiced him, it was like, "Hi, I'm Heinkel." Ha, ha. I'm Heinkel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like you a grown up stone Joe. Beavis. <laughs> oh, title hey, card unlocked. All right. Um, I don't know if I can show it, GC typo, but dude, Heinkel's underrated. Mute this man right now. Mute him. <laughs> he did nothing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I gotta go. Gotta prepare my no angry opinions allowed. Oh, this is oh, also the debut. This is the debut of um. I don't know if I can call him the nickname that we call him in, in our group calls, but <laughs> no. <laughs> you're probably not. Dude. It's the discount night. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's the boy. It's your boy. Yeah, one off on. night. Yeah, the the fifty percent off Black Friday deal night. <laughs> Yo, Drad, people are really complimenting you here. They're the saying dollar store you're, night. The voice you're doing is so good; it makes them want to punch someone's face. Um, Man, Drad, you're yeah, doing pretty good. Mictalage, I think I'm saying your name right please. there. Uh, we introduce characters at the start, but as you can see, um, good old good old red hair discount Reinhardt <laughs> here doesn't have his name up there yet, so. Discount yeah, we, we, we thought we beautiful picture of this red-haired man instead of me. Uh, if you want to direct your act, you know what's funny? People oh, on the thumbnail yeah. thought that that was Reinhardt, and I was like, "You're so wrong. You're all wrong." <laughs> Reinhardt really went downhill. <laughs> Reinhardt, no. Nah, Reinhardt used his power of what sexy. I, divine what I find hilarious sexy. as well is divine that Reinhardt Wilhelm Scumbag. looks so attractive, <laughs> and he looks so disgusting. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't read whatever language that is. I, I speak three languages, and it's incompetence, dyslexia, and English. So, well, well. Um, is, How do you speak one other? Is Hero Wait, here? Which language? I speak a little bit of Hawaiian, Japanese, and English. Uh, I am here. All right, cool. Um, yeah. Let me just look over the breaks real quick. Just to see where we're at. And Moth is here, right? You're good, Moth, now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Thank Hopefully you. my, my Thank computer you. won't we just give up. We now get a glass of water real quick. <laughs> okay. I'm well, cool kind of hot though. Remember to hydrate, kids. Yes. All right, we're about to see I how many... I hydrate all the time. We're about to see how many simps are in the chat right now for this chapter. I'm going to cry. <laughs> a lot. So many. Moth, you're okay for this, so. both Priscilla and Felt? Yeah, um, I awesome. I'll do my best to cover both of them. Yeah. You got this. Okay, okay. Let me know if you need help. Hold on yeah. so far, by the way, with Felt. With Felt, you have Priscilla. <laughs> She's yours. <laughs> if you okay. want, I could always read as Felt. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> wow, no. Kanda, shut what me your heart down. Desires, then. <laughs> yeah. I'm not covering for Priscilla if anything happens. So okay. after the computer crash, I have realized that um, this is uh, important. So I now have it on, on my phone and my computer. So I nice. will make sure that that doesn't happen to me. 
we have a dono Yay. from okay, roman okay. morales requesting a grandfatherly advice segment from purple on every break i need that docile tone of his golden voice gracing my headphones <laughs> <laughs> that's all right I like how you worded that. It's so proper. What the hell? It's so, it's so beautiful. Perfect original. That's like Julius. A Wilhelm's Jesus. advice number one: wear protection. <laughs> yes. Hey, we got over two hundred views right now. Thank you guys. Pog. Hello. Oh, awesome. Hello, everyone. Hi. The live stream. Hope you guys are all enjoying if it. You guys... I know that. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know that we've been two in a row, two days in a row, so I'm glad that you're all still joining us on this lovely Sunday, and I hope you're enjoying the reading so far. If you guys enjoy the VAs that are on this call right now, their credits are all in the description, so you guys can go show them your support if you guys want to. Go check them out. A lot of love to every single one I'm of not... these amazing voice actors, and a lot of love to every one of you for joining us today. If you don't subscribe to Yay! everyone, you can't watch the stream. As Kondo says, you'll die. <laughs> Five dollars? <laughs> You'll just die, I suppose. You yeah! won't stop subscribing to my YouTube. There's literally nothing there. That's what happened <laughs> with Wolf, and we got him like 400 subs. Get ratioed. <laughs> That's fantastic. Small oh, no, Gita with the five dollars. If you guys, I, I literally have no content for you. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> if you I guys have, I have one piece of content. It's it, really good. It, it. If you guys haven't checked out Swole Jito right here in the chat, he makes some banger artwork. He drew me with Hennessy with a smiley face on it. So yes. I think I followed Swole Jita today. Very pogger artist. He's my, he's literally my PFP on my uh, Twitter page. But enough talking, Ooh. enough chit chat. Condor, are you uh, ready to go, my guy? Can I check something? Yes. Yeah, I want to check something real quick. So it. like before, before I was like speaking from the side of my mic because I was looking at my monitor, but now I'm looking on my phone. So like, is my voice... Uh, is it way too loud now, peaking no, or anything? Sounds, no, it just sounds clearer, yeah. honestly. Okay, good. Good. It's sounds gonna great, be man. much better now then. Yeah, Kanda, go right into your mic, dude. I have you like at a hundred, so you're not peaking. You're pretty loud spoken already. Alright, and just to make sure Otto isn't in this chapter, right? Let me double check oh, right now. Know. Yeah, I'm checking the matrix right now. I don't see Otto in it. Alright, good, because like I, uh -huh. I would need to like move back quite a bit if i want to do auto when i'm this close to it you need to use your hands yeah. to talk yeah. i don't mind just i'll go through it right now and just scan it quickly and then you guys can just interact uh, no auto doesn't have minutes. any lines this cool auto doesn't have any lines. all right so i'm just gonna change my nickname real quick who's changing their nickname me oh okay gotcha can you be narado please <laughs> all right i'll change it right now <laughs> Kiki, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Is that New Zealand currency from Thomas Smith? Love the performances of voice so. actors so far. They're all doing amazing. Wilhelm VA is incredible. Will you cover the ReZero EX Light novel series? Is that because Wilhelm literally has two dedicated to him? Yeah, it's like uh, him and <laughs> Teresia, yeah. Oh my, we <gasps> Teresia VA. Oh my god, I'll die. I will die. If we get a, oh, what? If we get a Teresia oh. VA, I will. Oh my lord. If you Honda, what the fuck was that happy. noise? Yeah, I was about to say, I was a little too happy there. Conda that needs to get honked. Yeah. Conda and oh, I... Don't me. No, don't. Horny jail. Honk, go to horny jail. <laughs> all right, all right, children. Our I mean, five, just one. Chapter 16, horny jail. I thought you were actually starting. I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I've never heard of that before. Emilia, no. Like a war crime. <laughs> no! No, don't take me! This is the no. after hours chapter. <laughs> alright, let's let's all let's all mute. This is getting out of hand. Let's all mute. Let's get started. Man, this chapter's so saucy, we've got to put it in incognito mode. Damn. Damn. Okay. Alrighty guys. Arc 5, chapter 16. Uninvited guests. That touching moment was spoiled in the worst way. The red-haired man's behavior and attitude all betrayed an ugly nature. A rather repulsive smile spread across his unshaven face. He looked to be in his forties and carried the unpleasant scent of alcohol about him. Although his actions and appearance all invoked a sense of disgust which seemed to reflect his character, the man underneath the poor grooming was quite handsome. The beautiful characteristics, their desired form, were contaminated by something that was completely different. Something about the tall man's posture exuded an aura of repulsiveness. Who are you? Uh? 
The first to break the shock silence that had fallen across the tear room was none other than Subaru, who reached the back of his own waist and gripped the handle of the weapon there. Having lost his cool, Subaru's spinning head drove him to act impulsively. There was nothing that could have angered him more than the interrupting of the reconciliation between the clumsy, awkward duo of grandfather and grandson. Only Subaru knew why he was in such a frenzied race. Rage. It was not just a reconciliation between a friend and someone he respected that had been interrupted. It was the reconciliation of family. The beginning of a family looking for a connection. To dare to treat it like that. Answer me. Who the hell are you? You're really casting a hostile look at me, kid. As a knight, you do know who you're trying to provoke, right? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, mister. The only one here being provocative is you. I'm just asking you exactly what you're doing here. His patience reaching a breaking point, Subaru stood from the banquet on the spot. Beatrice, who was sitting next to him, saw the feelings fueling his reaction and shifted her position so that she could take his hand at any moment. His reliable partner had accurately sensed flames of anger residing in Subaru's heart. Glancing at Subaru with an unpleasant expression, the man scratched his head with a rude gesture. You are so annoying, kid. Hey, Sword Saint, or Julius Duo, or even Argyle, cut down this rude gift for me. <laughs> Pointing at Subaru with the hand he had been scratching his head with, the insolent man casually gave an order to three people in the hall, Reinhardt among them. Seeing that humiliation to his comrades, or rather, to people who he could call his comrades, Subaru wanted to strike at that grin with his whip. Please pay heed to your words. But he was interrupted by Julius's words before he could move. Julius, who stood up at some point, gently placed a hand on Subaru's shoulder from behind. Julius nodded slightly at the frozen Subaru, then turned to face the man. Currently, Ferris and I, and Reinhardt as well, we three are on temporary leave from our normal duties as we are serving our specific masters. Therefore, even the deputy commander should not hold the right to command us. Yep, Fairy Chan is now an obedient servant to the venerable Krasama. Therefore, I have no obligation to comply with the order. Keeping his sitting posture, Eris held Crochet's arm as he offered an immediate follow-up to Julius's words. Although Crochet, whose arm had just been taken, appeared a little surprised, she still filled her eyes with her strong will as she turned toward the red-haired man. The expression on everyone else's faces were similar. No one hid their hostility towards this man. That was natural. They had just shared a pleasant atmosphere, which was then torn apart by the man. However... Oh, oh I'm scared. How scary. Was not obvious that I was just kidding around? It's not like I don't know the gravity of my orders as the deputy commander. The deputy commander? The alcoholic man seemed to find something funny, slapping his legs together at Julius and Ferris's reactions. During their exchange, a word he could not let slip past reached Subaru, and so he frowned and posed his question. In response, the man once again leveled his mocking gaze in Subaru's direction. That's right. That's my delectable adornment. Deputy Commander of the Knights of the Kingdom of Lagunica, Heinkel. That's me. Don't give me such a righteous look. <laughs> this kid's voice is really harsh. It hurts, hurts, hurts me. So shut your worthless mouth, you dog. <sighs> the darkness twinkling in the man's narrowed eye sent a shuddering chill down Subaru's back. It was different from the awe-inspiring presence of a strong person or an overwhelming being like the white whale or a witch. It was something far more unspeakable. That something was familiar to Subaru, and yet it was impossible to recall exactly what it was. There was nowhere to escape that sense, and Subaru felt a ringing in his ears. Calm down, Subaru. Don't let the atmosphere of the deputy commander swallow you. Julius, who stood by his side, spoke to Subaru, his head dizzy. Hearing him, that man, 
Heinkel faced Julius with a dark smile. <laughs> a worthy reply, an exemplary polite answer. To show that respect as a knight, you truly are the knight of knights. Allow me to accept the compliment, Deputy Commander Heinkel. If I may ask, what is the reason for your visit? If my memory serves correctly, your duty as Deputy Commander should be guarding the Royal Capital. Drop those sarcastic words. Just how great of an influence on the vigilant defense of the Royal Capital can the absence of one man make? Captain Marcus Soma can handle it perfectly alone. Far better than I could. Although a royal family who could suffer disaster is missing. Heimkel! Considering his position, Heinkel's speech was incredibly disrespectful. Upon hearing it, Wilhelm roared his name in fury. The sword demon, shaking with anger, directed a sharp glare at Heinkel, who merely shrugged his shoulders. Heimkel! Just calling me once is fine. I've yet to lose my hearing from old age. Well, treat that as a drunken idiot's nonsense and ignore it. More importantly... Heinkel responded to Wilhelm's bitter voice by sticking a finger into his ear as he closed his eyes. Then, he opened them to look at Wilhelm. Isn't that a very nice feeling? I want to offer you my congratulations for your defeat of the White Whale. But you've been avoiding me. This is a feat that took 14 long years to accomplish, after all. I think that I also have the right to join in the joyful celebrations. Isn't that the case, honored father? Heimkel, I... Reinhard, what about you? Heimkel viciously stabbed his words right into Wilhelm's chest. Although the old man's face showed the pain of being cut by a blade, Heimkel showed no sign of caring. Instead, he directed his malice at a new target. Reinhard, who had silently observed the situation until just now, slowly looked at Heinkel upon hearing his name. Shouldn't you also be congratulating Honored Father on the burden that's been lifted off his shoulders, since he's carried out a wife, a mother, a grandmother's vengeance? At least offer him some nice words. That said... With this, Honored Father has finally avenged the previous Sword Saint who you'd murdered. Isn't that right? Subaru withdrew his original assertion, saying that Heinkel wore a malicious look on his face had been a mistake. Rather, he was the face of malice itself. Heinkel's words, expression, attitude, tone, behavior, and gaze all of these were manifestations of his intent, one that could only be described by the term malice. Indeed, every bit of Heinkel's demeanor contained nothing but pure malice. Previous... Sword Saint? Murdered? Subaru quietly blurted out those impressionable words. In his consciousness, there were other questions swimming about, but Subaru could not reasonably sort through them. However, Malicious intent would always spring on such an opportunity. Yeah, the predecessor sword saint murdered. Although I don't know exactly how ignorant you are, you have to be at least familiar with the title of sword saint, right? Our current sword saint is the most powerful hero of our day. But that was something he got from murdering his predecessor, robbing it from his own grandmother. That fact was immediately hidden from public knowledge. Silent time, Kel! You! Just how far are you intending to go? If you want to say something that sounds nice, then please stop, honored father. If nothing else, you simply don't have the right to disagree with me. After all, when the last Sword Saint died, the first to condemn Reinhard was none other than you. <clears throat> Heinkel's words contained a dense, noxious poison of abhorrence, and the contents of his speech were no more than vulgar curses. 
Reinhard had murdered his predecessor. Inconceivable. Wilhelm had bitterly condemned that Reinhard? Inconceivable. After all, to Reinhard, his predecessor had been, and to Wilhelm, Reinhard was, so obviously, that could not have been possible. Neither Reinhard nor Wilhelm would deny it, closing their mouths. Why? If either of them denied it, if either of them uttered a simple no, then Subaru would instantly believe it. A comrade and a beloved mentor. A malicious man covered with the scent of alcohol. There was absolutely no question as to who Subaru would believe. Therefore, he wanted one of them to deny those words. Is it hard to communicate now? Of course it is. It's been this way for 14 years. Neither you nor my father have changed at all. Without change, it's impossible for you to reconcile. That'd be too convenient. Would Theresia van Astrea forgive such a selfish affair? In the silence of the tear room, only Heinkel's profane words echoed. The previous sword saint. She had been Wilhelm's wife, as well as Reinhard's grandmother. And... To Heinkel. My dead mother is cursing us. Three generations and none of us have been forgiven. Reinhardt's father, Wilhelm's son. Considering Heinkel's words and deeds so far, Subaru correctly deduced his origin. Heinkel van Astrea. Testing the name out, he found that it echoed with the sense of correctness. The man in front of him was undoubtedly a member of the Astrea family. Even if his nature as a human was completely different from the other, upstanding Astraeas that Subaru knew. Don't attach the van to my name, kid. I haven't been given that honor. It's just Ankle Astraea. Huh? Hearing Subaru's previously questioning breath, Heinkel clicked his tongue and looked away. For the first time since arriving here, bitterness flashed over his half-visible face. His eyes, which had contained only sadistic glee as he'd insulted his family, seemed to carry a look of pain. As soon as he'd begun to ponder what happened, Subaru was interrupted. So, oh, what did you come here for? Uh, media? Everyone had been shuddering at Heinkel's unforgivable attitude. However, it was Amelia who first stood up and questioned him. Her silver hair floating behind her, she stood next to Subaru who could feel a wave of anger emanating from her. To Amelia, not feeling anger over the ruined atmosphere of the room or over such impolite behavior was impossible. She only ever became seriously angry when the situation concerned the feelings of others, and she was aware of how Reinhardt and Wilhelm had been hurt. We were dining happily. To deliberately spoil such a peaceful moment, what exactly do you intend? Oh... This is unexpected. Are you not Amelia-sama? I've heard the rumors. A poor half-witch girl who stands no fighting chance but struggles along anyway. Although I'd like to one day talk to you and ask how you think of me, right now I only want to hear one answer from you. Why did you come here? Was he attempting to throw Amelia off with insults? Subaru saw through him, and the surprised Heinkel felt disappointed. The members of the other factions also seemed surprised at Amelia's calm demeanor. It was a stark difference from the innocence Amelia had shown in the past. To say that she was pretending to be innocent would be a lie, however. This was Amelia being true to herself. The reason why we're all gathered here was because we were invited by Anastasia-san. It's very rare that we are all gathered in the same place. So I don't think you'd know... So I don't think you'd have randomly targeted such an opportunity. If you are someone important among the Royal Knight, then please, tell me exactly what you want. Not the same as the rumors. Answer me! Heinkel, who had been again scratching his head, was shaken by Amelia's momentum. Although Amelia was angry, she was by no means preparing an attack. The pressure emanating from her had nothing to do with magic. It was merely the strength of her feelings. You marched in with confidence just to back down when a girl glares at you. Mister, pretty embarrassing. 
That's right. Just when I was looking forward to sharing a fun story, too. Songstress sounds apparently quite the whimsical character. That'd be more interesting. Well, is that so? Then I'd appreciate it if this puzzling man would leave, since I'd love to discuss these rumors about songstress with everyone here. Fo following Amelia, <clears throat> Felt, Anastasia, and Cruchet spoke up as well. Like Amelia, who still face Heinkel, the three joined their domineering forces in opposition to this man. Facing the pressure and intimidation of all four, Heinkel's face could not help but twitch. They were on completely different levels. Considering his title, his position was rather lacking. I am terribly sorry, Deputy Commander. If there is nothing else for the time being, then I believe, for the benefit of all parties involved, that you should take your leave. Heinkel's reaction and the attitude of the royal candidates. Julius calculated that this would be the right time to bail Heinkel out. Subaru would have preferred to crush Heinkel on the spot, but changed his mind after seeing Reinhard and Wilhelm. He did not fully grasp the situation, and so he could not make hasty judgments. Deputy Commander, please make a decision. If possible, it is better for both parties to say nothing more. There is no need for that, commoner. That lustrous voice shined with the self-assurance of one that looked down on everything. The owner of that confident voice, which could shake the will of its listeners, seemed able to impose their own superiority wherever they went. Capable of dismissing common sense and establishing a new set of rules, ones which allowed no protest or objection. All the people in the tier room looked at the sliding door near where Heinkel stood. Everyone was fully aware that someone was about to stride in from the corridor. Heinkel had long since ceased to exist in anyone's mind. There was only caution against the sun's burning scowl that let the corridor as it walked down. Oh, all the trivial people have arrived? You have prepared a stage for mine debut. You deserve a praise for your behavior, and that only. A boldly exposed chest hugged by a blood-red dress, a mouth conquetishly covered by a fan. Her arms were crossed under her ample chest, pushing it up in the glamorous act of showing off her white skin without reservation. The behavior of a villainous woman. Her bright red eyes resembling the licks of a flame, a seductive atmosphere that amounted to an enchantment capable of mesmerizing all of the men in the world. Even seeing her once would scorch her violent beauty into one's memory forever. Excessive beauty would go as far as to become violently so. Her existence proved this. A teenage girl named Priscilla Barriel, the uninvited fifth candidate of the royal selection. So is this it? Frozen faces in a lifeless environment? Do you like this stale air so much, or is it just that every time we meet such an atmosphere forms? If so, that's incredibly pitiful. Priscilla frowned as she looked throughout the room and spoke in a provocative tone while fanning her face. Due to her abrupt debut, no one was able to rebuke her insults. At a poor reception, I deliberately graced this place of mine presence, placing your forehead on the floor and treating my, me with admiration and praise is what the correct reaction would be. That's how people would treat a deity. It won't happen unless you actually become the ruler. Hmm? Subaru couldn't help but comment on Priscilla's arrogance. Hearing his mutter, Priscilla turned to look at him, trapping Subaru with her bright red gaze. What? Are you? I had heard that this would be a gathering of fools who not know their place and would compete for the throne. Of course, they would also bring fools to support them, but why is a vulgar commoner like yourself present? Are you... for real? Subaru was halted by the hostility facing him. Priscilla's words were neither joking nor mocking, but rather, she was being genuine. Priscilla had honestly completely forgotten about Subaru's existence. Although they had gone for a year without seeing each other, Subaru's idiocy in the capital should not have been so easily forgiven. Forgotten. Although, it would be correct to say that it was a very Priscilla-like attitude. It was not an attitude that was particularly appreciated. Princess, that's a bit much, isn't it? Although I don't know how much he's worth to you. To me, he's almost like a brother. He's a very interesting opponent, yeah? 
Then, a frivolous voice cut across the heavy atmosphere that was about to get worse. The voice sounded muffled and was accompanied by the sound of metal. A man with a single arm spoke soothing words as he entered from the corridor to join Priscilla's side. His face was entirely covered by a jet black helmet, and a solid, broad physique gave the impression that he was a strong man. He was both a servant to Priscilla and, like Subaru, a summoned man from another world, Al. And, of course, he had accompanied his master here, inserting himself between Priscilla and Subaru. Hey, you remember, right? It'd be hard to forget a guy appearing in the castle and doing something dumb to embarrass himself in front of so many people. It's that guy. Princess even clutched her stomach when she had a good laugh about it. I have no impression whatsoever. In the first place, Al would never laugh so hard that I would... Al, I would never laugh so hard that I would need to clutch mine stomach. So do not belittle such an honorable presence as mine, own to the level of a casual commoner. I shall not be in this tolerant next time. I shall cut off your head. You see, brother, sorry I couldn't do anything. Maybe if you work hard to become better. Give me a little more credit for the things I've done in the past year! Al soon gave up trying to jog his master's memory and instead turned to apologize to Subaru, his head bowed in apology. Subaru sighed, feeling like Al had not changed at all in this past year. Although, for the middle-aged Al, undergoing a noticeable change from his light-hearted demeanor would be fairly impossible. You're a little late, Priscilla-sama. How long were you going to make me act alone? I had heard that you were supposed to be coming earlier. Silence, commoner. You shall dance as ordered to. Until I give the order to stop, you are to expect it to dance until you die. Those who misunderstand their duties or attempt to correct a mistake they believe I have I've made are condemned to death. Um. On the other hand, Heinkel, realizing that the atmosphere in the room had changed, immediately turned to Priscilla, who was standing behind him. However, any type of argumentative attitude taken toward Priscilla would be entirely futile. Although Heinkel was embarrassed by the uncomposing Priscilla, Subaru raised his gaze after listening to their conversation. Priscilla, did you bring that guy? Then, commoner, just who allowed you to dare to speak with me without the proper honorific? Even the compassionate and generous sigh when faced of such a helpless person have a limit to my patience. Princess. Al called briefly to her as he saw the brutal look lodged in her eyes as she glared at Subaru. Then, Priscilla closed one eye and gave a slight breath. For some reason, my servants, my servant and I have seemed taken a liking to you. To Al, who spared your life. No, there is no necess necessity at all to thank Al. Worship my forgiveness. If you do so, I shall spare you. Thanks for your generosity and consideration. Then... The answer to my question is... If you are under the impression that I brought this commoner here, then you would be correct. He is at mine calling. For what purpose? Subaru raised his voice at the assertive Priscilla and questioned her purpose. Uninvited guests upon uninvited guests had arrived. What kind of plot was brewing here, Subaru needed to know. However, in the face of Subaru's question, Priscilla merely tilted her head and... I thought that it would make an interesting sight. An... Um, interesting sight? That is correct. Disoriented family disputes and the joy and sadness that comes from relationships. Such ugly performances are so very exciting. In fact, do you see? The sword saint and the sword demon acted rather human. Such a sight is very rare. Priscilla! That twisted, crooked perspective enraged Subaru. As Priscilla said, Reinhardt's family dispute was hardly seen, and the idea and that sea of bitterness was hardly something that needed to be known by anyone in the world. If Heinkel had not appeared, such a dark history would never have come to light. Without him, the mending of the normal oh my god. The mending of the normal relationship between grandfather and grandson would have been underway. To have torn that. Stop, brother. There's no meaning to a fight happening here. Princess's poor character isn't a thing that's been here for a day or two. Just think of it as bad luck, as bad stars, and try to let it go. Wolf. If you know your master has poor character, 
then you should just be trying to lead her onto the right path by reining her in. Indulging a rampaging horse is just irresponsible. Al reached for Subaru with a single arm, slowly shaking his head. Since his hand was grabbing Subaru's wrist, if anything happened, he would not be able to draw his sword on such short notice. In other words, his actions were indicating that he had no wish whatsoever to fight. Noticing this, Subaru took a long breath. He looked around and found that he was the only one who had acted on his impulsive anger. Outsiders aside, even Julius and Ferris had not wanted to start anything. Of course, this was a gathering for the candidates to the throne. No one wished to entertain the possibility of anyone getting hurt here. But even in this case, no matter how much their hearts suffer... Subaru! Amelia's wavering eyes called to Subaru, who continued submerged in his fury. Feeling a tug on his sleeve, Subaru also knew that Beatrice was granting him her support. Feeling the support of the two, Subaru was unable to bow his head. That vicious hound's fury is looking like it's over. I'm wondering something. Even though I didn't send you an invite, how did you come to learn of this meeting? Priscilla seemed ready to take her leave and carry on her agenda. However, Anastasia took an opportunity to halt her. Although Anastasia's tone was soft, she was quite alert. After all, a child run in her mouth shouldn't be allowed to run free. Don't talk to me with that affection. My ears are decaying. I'm more than capable of keeping up with a quick-thinking fox. Oh my, could it be that you're neglecting to mock me as a commoner? If you have yet to see what you should have, then that level of ignorance places you in the same category of all those other fools. Could it be that you were foolish enough to ask to want me to overlook you? The two were engaged in a battle of words. However, Priscilla may or may not have been deliberately provoking Anastasia's natural business-focused rhetoric. Anastasia leisurely caressed the scarf on her neck. Leaked information is quite worrying, you know. Anything that reaches someone else's ear has been le has been leaked from another mouth not lacking ca caution. And the more the one learns, the more holes that can be found. This is self-evident. You are not the only one who observes and listens to others. Ah, uh, but you see, I'd thought of you as someone who wouldn't engage in espionage to deal with the likes of us. A flying insect buzzes near mine ear. What can I do without knowing its location? I would have to tr catch the insects using my eyes and ears, which is precisely what I have done. Of course, the same holds true to for you. Priscilla's implication was that she treated every opposing candidate as a fly near her ear, indicating that she was never to be overlooked. Subaru held the same opinion as Anastasia. It was inconceivable that Priscilla had actually adopted the appropriate tactics and put them into practice against her enemy factions, and the result of Anastasia's negligence brought about the worst of happening on this day. Mr. is Reinhardt's father, yeah? Ignoring the conversation so far, a frivolous voice shifted the topic. Her gaze sweeping across the room, the still eating felt, her mouth still soiled with daisukiyaki sauces, found Priscilla's gaze and glared back. After all, I've done some experiences at the castle, so I thought I'd, I was going to cut, catch up with what was going on in the conversation. I'm not really interested in this guy's family relations. Only if Reinhardt and the Mr. We together, that's different. Oh, and what did the little girl from the ghetto notice? Although, I... I don't really care about them. I'm not unrelated to him. The lands of the House of Astrea are in fact a lifeline for us. Except this guy hasn't actually given Reinhardt the land. The power of the family is still in the hands of that mister. Oh, Reinhardt's cheek stiffened slightly. Subaru and the others caught on to Felt's concern. Having been raised as an orphan, Felt had nothing to her name and was currently using Reinhardt's parents, the Astrea family's lands as her base. Where? Bit by bit, she accumulated support by producing results. However, those lands were not Felt's own. They were the assets of the Estrella family and were on loan to her and Reinhardt. But those were not Reinhardt's own territories. Even he had borrowed them. <laughs> Looks like you finally realized the seriousness of the situation, idiot. Interjecting in their conversation was Heinkel, who wore an expression of pride and laughed within. 
As I expected, he looked as if he had been waiting for the topic to return to Reinhardt and fell, his gazing shifting back and forth between the two. That's it. The head of the Estrella family is still me. I haven't passed the position on to Reinhard, nor do I intend to. After all, the cumbersome affairs of politics shouldn't burden our busy sword saint. A family head and name only. You should be ashamed. When we went to the Estrella territories, only a handful of civil servants and maids with bloodshot eyes were maintaining it. Now that we've been restoring it, you actually dare to return to ruin it? Even if only in name, even if I'm irresponsible, the crown of the family head is still mine. What's more, haven't my lands began to improve? The people should be crying out in support of their lord now. I'm so loved by my people. I moved to the point of tears. Heinkel res relentlessly mocked Felt, who tried to swallow her rage. At those vile and poisonous words, Subaru's vision turned white with rage. The room was filled with anger at that disgusting sight. All the while, Hankel bathed in a rain of contempt, kept a joyful face. It was clear now, this man was completely abnormal. Your sense of crisis is right, Reinhardt's master. The Estrella territories are mine. However, I'll never support you. You can clearly see who I'm supporting. Heinkel stood as if on a stage, expecting thundering applause. He gestured towards Priscilla, a clear declaration that he would support a different candidate than his son and father. I've heard about your achievements in the past year. Taking my place in the Lords, in the Lords. In addition to agreeing that is a great achievement, I will also say it is time for you to take your leave of them now. If you understand it, hurry up and hand them over to me. Hey, commoner. Uh -huh. What is it, Priscilla-sama? I'm doing something very important right now. Shut up. The ensuing violence had been seen had to be seen to believed. Shortly after she was finished speaking, Priscilla thrust her fan at Heinkel, who widened his eyes. Following the unfolding fan was a terrifying gust that slammed Heinkel's slender body towards the ground with powerful momentum. Heinkel's eyes rolled back in his head, having lost his consciousness after the impact, but Priscilla's attack went one step further. She kicked him into the air and with a swipe of her foot, and swiftly reached her hand to meet his body. Princess, end your anger here. Otherwise, he's going to die. Priscilla was stopped before she could deliver the final blow with her arm by Al, who had predicted her outrage. Priscilla then turned to the helmeted servant in response. A sword of crimson had appeared in her grabbed wrist, it had a western-style curve and a narrow blade, but it was engraved with wave-like flames. It was a most unusual sword, having instantly materialized in and disappearing from Priscilla's hand in the blink of an eye. Witnessing that, Al slowly released Priscilla's wrist. Really? Spare me. You even drew your yang sword. That's really not good for my hair to go. That was very rude, Al. From who did you receive permission to dare touch mine flawless skin? You won my favor on a whim, so to defile my body is a mere dream laying at the end of a dream. Priscilla forcefully slapped her free her freed hand on Al's stomach, bringing him agony. She exhaled loudly from her nose and then looked down at the pitiful Heinkel who was writhing on the ground. After witnessing the brutal look in his eyes, he had certainly deserved this. However, what Al said was also true. However, there is some truth to what you said. It would be excessive to kill him. If you think so, then I hope you'll be more gentle with me in the future. Oh. Quiet. I'm not a demon. I will allow you to lick my feet later as a reward. Don't put it like I get turned on by that. It will lead to misunderstandings. Al, who had fallen to his knees after receiving a blow, desperately defended himself, but did not receive Priscilla's attention. She gazed at Heinkel with her blood-red eyes. 
having calmed down for the time being and snapped her fingers. Jolt, move the commoner out of here. Although Dull, he is seemingly worthwhile recruit. Considering the trouble of bringing him into the fold, giving him up would be a shame. Yes, Priscilla-sama. In response to her call, another figure emerged from the hall. It appeared that a child who was many years from being fully grown had been waiting in the corridor. He had pink fluffy curls, a slim figure, and a fair face that would be easily mistaken by a woman's, and a high voice which indicated that he had yet to reach puberty. Seeing an undeveloped child dressed in a butler's uniform felt unethical. Schult was the name for the young boy, who, if going solely by appearances, looked to be around Be Beatrice's age. I apologize, Heinkel sama To the unconscious Heinkel, Schult grabbed Heinkel's feet and began to struggle to pull him outside. Of course, it was very unreasonable to expect a child to carry Heinkel out. However, Schult made no complaint about Priscilla's order, and at the same time, he treated Heinkel with an attitude of respect. Schultz Goon always tries to be brave and strong, no matter what kind of order he receives. Princess needs to remember to praise him later. That's only natural. He is under mine at a ploy and serves me wholeheartedly. I'm not so merciless as to let him, as to let a lower, loyal subject of mine to go without a reward. Lair, I shall allow him to lick mine feet. Schultz Goon wouldn't realize that you're joking and would tearfully do exactly as you request. Please give him a more conventional reward. Then perhaps I'll give him the honor of being held by mine body as I sleep. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. But now I want to take his place. That was the listless dialogue between Priscilla and Al as they watched Schultz and Hanko leave. Finally, all the outsiders have been removed. Now, only the members of the Royal Selection factions remained. So, what's going to happen with that guy? You seriously want me to drive us away from the Astria territory to weaken us? You do not have to treat that commoner's words with such gravity. Were you not responsible for the re re-civilization of that territory? The, the Lord returns to his ha house intended to drive you away. Then who would follow him? Although the people are foolish and ignorant, they are not heartless fools who forget their grace. If you make a large wave, a correspondingly large wave will return to you. He shall not be able to summon any waves. Then, why was that guy inv invited? It was already been said, has it no? It, I found the situation interesting. Sooner or later, all I want is sh everything to be shall in my hand hands. That is an established fact. In that case, only mine route will vary depending on what is entertaining and what is not. And that route is precisely decided by me. To the end, I brought him as a toy to kill time. No matter what happens, the outcome cannot be changed. The absolute confidence Priscilla held transcended common sense and unreasonably imposed her will upon the world. The only way to deal with it would be to give up and bow down, or to fight it with similar attitude, and so... Hmm... Here, four candidates met her gaze without hesitation and an expression of confrontation. Accepting those glares, Priscilla gave a hearty, delighted laugh. Excellent. The outcome has been decided. But my journey will naturally have its share of happy excitement. Mine self has decided that you're all cut above the commoners. And once you all have become worthy of being mine opponent, then mine self will of course welcome you with my full cap capabilities. You are not worthy as my opponents. Was the judgment Priscilla had just made. No, she had said so long ago. She still treated Amelia and the others as insects. She did not even recognize them as enemies at all. Then... I'll be sure to make you cry and regret that arrogance. Felt's declaration had been a precise representation of the will of all the occupants of the room. And that is the end of chapter 16. Great job, everyone. One more time. Good job, Ikanda. Good job, Dad. Oh, yes. yeah. Kyle's yes. been taking over. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, whoa. Is Kondo alive again? Am I still shit? No. <laughs> Did you check your your connections? It might just be it, it shifted. I heard something fall earlier. Yeah, Wait, same here. Did you speak this now? It was good. 
there was a like one part where it sounded like Zoda bugs were attacking him, as the chat put it. <laughs> like that. It was Not one anymore, time. It's but... better. No, you're That's fine. That's better. Now. Oh, okay. When I we... thought it was. No, the, the line that we cut you on was the line where it happened. So it was just oh, that one I thought, part. Dude, I thought it was happening for a full minute, like consistently. No, 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 no. no. When, <laughs> we, when we told you to cut, then that was the point when it started. So you were perfectly fine. Oh, thank God. Okay, yeah. And I wasn't even checking Discord like the whole time. So I wouldn't have seen the messages. So like it literally happened at the perfect time. Yeah. I just randomly decided to go on my computer at that moment. When, pass or when Kun possessed the mic, Ram was there. <laughs> yeah. That was all Ram. Wind magic. Um, Allie, you have to dip out, hey. I think you said, too. Yes, I do. Can we get a hand for Anastasia-sama in the chat? Yeah. Thanks, oh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye. 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 Have a good one. Air. I think Tealdi's leaving, too. I'll be going to... If yeah, that's I not Bye, Drad. I I okay, everyone. Bye, Bye. 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 Me as well. Bye. Bye. You're on like 50 chapters Bye. or something. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'll see you in a lot of chapters. Oh. <laughs> Great Heinkel, though. That was a good Heinkel. His timing was so good. He can narrate that. Pretty nice. He used to be a narrator. Yes, he does. He needs to be. Oh, boy. Okay. Are you, are, are you good now, Wolf? Or? Acting. Cause Will has to go to. Okay. Yeah, because I know this is why I'm annoyed because this is a very heavy mini chapter. <laughs> yeah, um, I think. Oh wait, wasn't Kiki doing this yes, one? Yes, narrating. Yeah. I suppose. Awesome. Yes, yes. Sure. <laughs> Can I do it in my normal voice, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. No, okay. don't kill yourself, please. <laughs> Just to clarify, uh, Kyle's has not heard this chapter yet. Right. Wait, is this seventeen already? Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> Nick Tran <laughs> with another around. five dollars for a second. It looked like Priscilla was a figment of Felt's imagination, and I loved life a little more. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, good job, Moth. Good job, Moth. Good job, Moth. Yeah, great job, Moth. Good job, Moth. No, you switched pretty well between them. Oh, yeah, okay. you did really well. Oh, Thank you really very well. much. I'm glad it was satisfactory. Moth is the most wholesome <laughs> person, and she voices Priscilla. The, the irony, yeah. Dad is also pretty wholesome. Yeah, give it up and for definitely Moth, not alcoholic. Great job. So. Yay! Really Yay! Yay! Yeah. Uh, thanks for the save, by the way, Gold with Schultz. I completely forgot. I, it, was, it was so awkward when nobody was voicing her for him for a moment, so I was like, I'll just do it. I, 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 was, I was thinking, oh shit, didn't I voice Schultz last time? I thought, I was yeah, that was, in and that then was Gold my bad. Did Schultz I forget yeah. what Gold says, to be honest. Is that the kid? Like, Yeah, yeah. it's the shelter. Yeah. yeah. I totally God. thought he was an adult. I... Otherwise, I would have just straight up pulled out my Ash Kitchen voice. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. I was going to do posh, polite, little British boy. Well, you're going to be like, my name's Shalt. <laughs> no, that's not posh, you bloody wanker. <laughs> I don't that know. sounds my name southern. <laughs> hey, guys. My name's Shalt. And welcome to no. no, we're not oo wooing. Stop, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, what? My name's Shulk. All right, they're gonna leave. They're gonna leave. We're gonna lose all of our viewers. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> seven. I am Liliana. <laughs> Everyone's asked for our aras. There's no oo oo So Kyle, the more you give in, the more they're gonna ask. Cease. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't give in to the ads, okay? <laughs> so yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Can, do I have permission to get the the dickhead off the screen now? I literally labeled him. Yes, I literally yes, labeled him yes, dickhead please. on OBS. Get him out of my eyesight, please. Okay, cool. Oh. Just leave the wholesome one with Wilhelm and Reinhardt, please. Yeah. Yay. Literally, I don't. I don't want. Somebody beat me do to the punch what? when Priscilla like pushed in Heinkel shit. Somebody put that she just got ratioed, and I was like, we're on the same brave or brain wavelength. <laughs> so <laughs> great. Well, at least I'm not gonna get ratioed again. Country Bunkins showed up. I don't want to get cancelled just yet. <laughs> Not just yet. Man. Damn. Uh, oh yeah, good job to Al too. Good job, Hero. Great job, man. Yeah, uh, yes. Thank you. Thanks, Hero. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Alright, it's time for the Wolf and uh, Hollow show. Uh, okay, bro, man. Oh, Otto's in this. <laughs> Wait, he is? Yeah, yeah he is. You make a cameo, Otto-kun. Come on. You have yeah. one line. 
Is it at the Singular end? Long, it's at the beginning. Write it down. Oh, okay. It's the first page. Gotcha. All right. Are we getting started, <laughs> I ready? suppose? Oh my god. <laughs> you got this, Kiki! Music. Kiki sounds like she's on the verge of tears. I'll be doing right now. I'll marry the Beatrice voice if we do a fan fiction, but right now I want to do my normal. <laughs> You messaged me, you're like, can I? Can you at least read the chapter in Beatrice's voice? Because it's so demeaning to Julius. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> the chapter title, I think, is what he meant. Not the entire chapter. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh. You're fine. Okay. I'll do my normal voice. <clears throat> Arc 5, Chapter 17. The Ever-Present Armor. Fully recovering the meal's original atmosphere was now impossible. After hearing Felt's sharp words, a satisfied Priscilla, Priscilla had left the hotel with Al in tow. It would probably be said that she was delighted to having achieved all her goals there. Considering the damage she had wrought, she really was selfish. Everyone soon returned to their meal in the tea room, unable to chat as happily as they had before. And so ended the dinner event. Her impact had been incredibly hurtful to everyone present. In particular, the feelings of both Reinhard and Wilhelm must have been unimaginable to outsiders. Even so, the fortitude of those two men was strong enough that neither would allow any of their anxiety to show in their expressions. Of course, the imminent recollection of grandfather and grandson could only be postponed, just that was enough for a hard knot of grief to take root in Subaru's heart. We were incredibly lucky that Garfield wasn't present. Those were the words left by Otto as he departed for the Muse Chamber of Commerce following the meal. As he has said, it would have been a serious matter if Garfield or someone else prone to rage had been present during the meal. It was not difficult to imagine Garfield flying at Heinkel in a rage and causing a violent tragedy. Everyone at the breakfast had, for the most part, calm and rapturous natures. Maybe Priscilla had even factored that into her satisfaction. How could that be? Oh, that really be a coincidence among coincidences. The look with Priscilla arrogantly prided herself on was next to impossible. It had only brought them the worst of results. Although irrefutable, it was painful to admit. The worry Amelia and Beatrice felt had been surely more painful than any indignation Subaru felt. Even Felt had been acting reasonably, leaving Subaru the only one who had left his emotions get the better of him. To both foe and friend, Subaru wanted to give people apologies for his lack of consideration. Amelia and Beatrice had returned to their rooms for a short break, before accompanying Subaru on their walk. Subaru took the time to try to walk off his frustration, his footsteps harder than usual. The inside of his shoe pressing against his feet felt rather like a reflection of his frustration. Landing on the train of thought, Subaru began to apply more and more pressure on his steps, trying to relieve his feelings until... Do not step so hard on the floor, Subaru. You will cause trouble for the staff of this inn. Subaru, who had been gazing down at his feet, turned his head toward the sound. He had apparently unknowingly walked into the corridor facing the courtyard. Standing in the courtyard was Julius, who was bathing in the wind. His hand swept his purple hair in a practiced gesture, and it with withstood the cool breeze with a dramatic image. Julius's handsome face, as always, inspired envy in Subaru, clicked his tongue at the other young man before taking a seat next to him at the porch. Emilia-sama and Beatrice-sama are not with you, correct? That be the case. They're not children. They're at the age where they want some private time. And I have the decency to respect that right. I've set up time for... and place for a date later. Although I am unfamiliar with some of the phrases you use, it seems that even you have learned to better understand the thoughts of others. Oh, uh, you! In a breach of convention, 
Julius was the one who first spoke words that instigated quarrel. However, after seeing Julius's expression, Subaru's annoyance dissipated. Julius shook his head slightly. Apologies. If you were truly one incapable of being considerate of others, you would not have been able to denounce the deputy commander with such anger in front of everyone. I should offer you my gratitude. That sounds like a thanks. So please don't give me one. That guy just rubbed me the wrong way. Compared to everyone else who maintained their cool, I must have looked awful. No such thing happened. It was precisely because of your rash attitude that others could calm down, even myself included. Your impulsive reactions were helpful, it seems. You! You weren't planning to praise me from the start, were you? Subaru frowned at Julius's genuine tone. Julius's words were always accompanied by the traces of a taunt when spoken to Subaru, although said taunting came from both sides, so Julius was not solely at fault. In any case, it was nigh impossible for Subaru to accept that compliment in earnest. I know. I should be calmer and more collected to be like a knight. Even holding the position of knight, I'm aware that I still can't consciously keep a cool head. Even though that all be outlined in a schoolboy's book of manners. That is correct. Indeed, from a knightly perspective, your behavior was by no means commendable. However... Facing the uncomfortable Subaru, Julius fell silent. However, his next action led to Subaru's eyes to widen in surprise. What are you doing? It is as you can see. All I can see is you bowing at me! Julius bent down and inclined his head to Subaru. This was not a knight's courtesy, nor was it a ceremonious ritual. There was no formal inspiration of his motion at all. It was pure courtesy, one that was completely ignorant of position. It was a behavior completely unlike Julius. Thank you. Thank you for showing the indignation that I could not. Huh. I have no idea what you're talking about at all. Valuing the honor of a knight means that, no matter the occasion, you must act with virtue. Even if your own friend is disdained, even if your own friend is treated with inhumane words, you cannot indulge in behaving according to your own feelings. But you are not like that. Maintaining his posture, Julius repeatedly gave Subaru his share of thanks for the latter had compensated for the former's shortcomings. Subaru could only, could only feel puzzled at the unexpected reaction. Caught between my knighthood and my emotions, I quickly repressed my anger. However, seeing your passionate rebuttals, I felt ashamed of myself. So I wish to thank you. Thanking me for being angry in your behalf, huh? Subaru uttered a sound of understanding and Julius finally looked up. With just one sentence, Julius had finally revealed his genuine feeling, reflected in his gaze. Seeing him, Subaru can only give him a snarl. <sighs> what a stupid thing to say! Really, stop kidding around! Stop kidding around? Huh? Of course! Why would I be angry in your place? I was angry pu purely because I'd personally been ticked off. Not because there was someone else who wanted to snap at that bearded guy. I can never do something as clever as express someone else's anger. Subaru spoke these genuine thoughts to Julius, feeling like he had misunderstood the matter. Subaru did not consider his anger to be some kind of noble indign indignation. After all, only Reinhard and Wilhelm could understand their own feelings. Subaru was an outsider who had simply been angry that such an atmosphere has been defiled. His anger was purely for his own sake. If you were angry, why didn't you say something? I couldn't have calmly dealt with that old man alone. But if you'd been backing me up, then we might have phased him. No matter what, he's still the deputy commander of the Royal Knights. It would be fairly troublesome if I made an enemy of a commanding officer. This has nothing to do with your rank. Not to mention, you just 
blurted out, no matter what. Don't be so narrow-minded. You're constantly thinking about behaving like a knight, or acting with a knight's demeanour or whatever. Is your heart even coated in a knight's armour? Hmm. Facing a silent Julius, Subaru rested his elbow on his knees, and with his cheeks in his palms, he gave an exaggerated sigh. What a stupid quarrel. Subaru not just not, had not only just rejected Subaru Julius's gratitude, but had also been enraged by him. Thinking of the cause of the incident, including Heinkel, made him even angrier. Even my heart is coated in a knight's armor. That is pretty harsh. <laughs> Although I think my wording was pretty cool and artistic. Just ignore it. I was only kidding. No, I will keep it in mind. I am glad that I am le learning a lesson from you. This is something that I never would have thought possible a year ago. That uncomfortable stuff might be over with. But I still have nightmares about it. He still sometimes had dreams set in the knight's training field about his confrontation confrontation with Julius and his subsequent brutal beating. Although the physical suffering he had experienced at the time was painful to recall, what he had gone through mentally and emotionally in the aftermath hurt far more to remember. The memory of his own incompetence had been clearly imprinted into his mind, where from time to time it played like a movie. Although, of course, his nightmares were not merely filled with duel with Julius, but that event was something that could rival the memories of several deaths. If you can help it, I would rather not have this continue. Thinking of meeting you in your dreams is... Thinking of meeting you in your dreams every night is... Unpleasant. That's rich coming from the culprit! Don't you think I'd rather share my dreams and in intimacy with Amelia Tan? So your pursuit of her has been reduced to relying on... Dreams, rather than your own ability. That suits your style. You bastard! Don't treat me like trash after praising me! Take a damn look at yourself! Anastasia-sama is a lovely woman. There is no greater honor than being able to serve, in her, serve her at a distance. Naturally, I think I should be very happy with my place. At Julius's calm response, Subaru gave a cat-like growl. The uncomfortable atmosphere vanished along with his bow as Julius recovered his usual image. Subaru frowned in relief, cleared his throat with a cough, and changed the flow of the conversation. <clears throat> About that bearded old man. He said he was the deputy commander or whatever. Is that true? Your doubts are understandable, but that is indeed true. The man was a deputy commander of the Royal Knights of the Kingdom of Lagunica, Heinkel Astrea himself. Are they blind? Or deaf? Or maybe even messed up in the head? You truly do question everything. Of course, none of the royal knights or other squires can question the qualifications of the deputy commander. In fact, the title of deputy commander serves more like a decoration, and no one has seen him perform his duties as of yet. Julius answered with a shake of his head, and Subaru's imagination swarmed with the mental image of a senior official. To be given incredible rewards while sh while shirking any truly important responsibilities, that was exactly how Subaru envisioned the majority of high-ranking government officials, and that was indeed Heinkel's situation. On top of that, the people around him even understood his incompetence and knew of his demeanor. Could it be that he's taken advantage of his status as a Sword Saint's father? That is not the complete picture. Taking the role of the deputy commander is not something that would escape the attention of his son, Reinhardt. Although Reinhardt's fairness is universally acknowledged, but what if it concerns his family? Not everyone would trust him. I don't think that Reinhardt would be willing to bend his moral code for his father. Even so, he is still Reinhardt's father. No matter what others think, to Reinhardt, he is undoubtedly a family member who shares his blood. No one can know what he himself feels. Julius spoke calmly to appease the heated Subaru. Grinding his teeth, Subaru voiced a groan. It was exactly as Julius said, 
no matter how mediocre he was, as long as he was Reinhardt's father, then only Reinhardt's own heart would know whether or not he should renounce their relationship. As a knight who values fairness and civility, he should not be deceived by paternity, but it would not be easy for Reinhardt himself to freely cut off such a relationship. Obviously, outsiders should hold a firm stance on what Reinhardt should or should not do, but to do so would be incredibly arrogant. That is not the complete picture, you said. So, are there other reasons? What else could there- He's also the head of the House of Astrea, and the son of Wilhelm Sama. To put it bluntly, he is related to the kingdom's best knight and the previous sword saint. The possibility that not gifting him a high-ranking position would lead to treason, and that cannot be overlooked. This was Julius's brief, emotionless reply. Hearing those, Subaru only needed a few seconds to understand the implication behind it. This country! Whether it's Reinhard, or Wilhelm, I'd never believe that! If Heinkel resented the country, then the Sword Saint's family would turn against it! Treating them so cautiously, as if they were a time bomb! If that's how it is! If so, wasn't that an insult to Reinhard and Wilhelm? Their honor was so obvious, yet the country still believed them capable of treason? The anger that Subaru now felt matched its earlier intensity, back when he was facing Heinkel. Julius shook his head and pressed a hand to Subaru's shoulder. Your anger is expected. However, the kingdom has to deal with every possibility. Something impossible isn't a possibility! That kind of thing would clearly, obviously, never happen! Wilhelm Sama is the former commander of the Royal Knights. Huh? Subaru, who had been trying to escape Julius's grip, unconsciously stopped after moving after those words. Fourteen years ago, a member of the royal family was abducted in the royal castle. At that time, Wilhelm Sama was the head of the royal knights, and was placed in charge of the search for the kidnapped member of the royal family. So? What about it? Even I know about famous events like this. Felt was the member of the royal family who had been abducted in childhood, a story that had become widespread. Subaru, who had already dismissed the story, did not catch the meaning of Julius's work. I know the royal kid was never found. So? What about it? Wilhelm San took responsibility and then resigned as a royal knight. So? He has a reason to hate the kingdom? But then- At the time, the former sword saint was sent out to subjugate the White Whale, on what became known as the Great Conquest. That happened at the same time Wilhelm Sama had been searching for the kidnapper, away from the royal capital. Pondering in Julius's word, Subaru felt into a void of thought. Something Wilhelm had once said seemed to fill that blank in. Wilhelm had said it. He had said that he had not been able to be at his wife's side at the time of her death. He said he had not been able to be with his wife when she died, and the royal family investigation kept him from that. So, do you mean that Wilhelm Saal ended up having a grudge against the kingdom or something like that? I do not know what Wilhelm Saal's true intent was. However, it is true that after the search for the abducted princess was terminated and the Great Conquest ended in failure, Wilhelm Sama withdrew from the Royal Knights. After that, the branch of the Royal Knights would have collapsed if it not were for the steps Marcus Sama took to reorganize them. I don't give a damn about that! I'm trying to talk about Wilhelm Sam! You! Is that what you think? That Wilhelm Sam would resent everyone because of his wife? That's... That's... Raising a banner of rebellion towards the kingdom due to his own resentment. Was that really how Wilhelm von Estrella was seen by everyone? Why, after seeing someone who was so deeply in love and willing to give up everything for his love, could anyone think that? Had they never looked at him in the eye or gazed at his steady back? Had they never seen the sword demon's frank, honest blade? 
That person would never do such a thing! Why does nobody understand?! This time, Subaru indeed threw off the hand on his shoulder and shoved Julius's chest. He stood and backed up, glaring at Julius and losing his momentum. The yellow eyes looking back at him seemed to almost admire Subaru's anger. He understood. He knew that this degree of anger was inappropriate. What Julius has said to Subaru had not reflected his own views. Julius's own attitude was plain for all to see. After all, one year ago, Julius had been led by Wilhelm after the latter had slain the White Whale. He had comforted Wilhelm, who had spent 14 long years trying to avenge his wife. There was no way that he would have ever suspected Wilhelm to intend to rebel against the kingdom. Sorry, I was being an idiot. No, do not apologize. You are in the right. I am the one in the wrong. If anyone should apologize, that would be me. Dropping their gazes, they both closed their eyes. They both felt an unbearable weight. Their helplessness in doing anything to change the country's doubt in Wilhelm. Subaru and Julius both, even if they vented their feelings, were still ultimately powerless. So, is it the same thing for Reinhard? Following that same logic, Reinhard will resent the kingdom for sending his grandmother to her death, and, in turn, killing his predecessor. But that's not the case. Then? However, the kingdom does not doubt that Reinhard has no intense intent in holding a rebellion. Rather, that suspicion goes to Heinkel-sama. With the drop of Reinhard's father na father's name, Subaru's eyes widened. Even though it was a name he did not want to hear, he could not just plug his ears at the topic. Any conversation involving that name would not be pleasant. How is Reinhard's relationship with his father, aside from the obvious blood one? There was a period of time when Reinhard gave Heinkosama his complete utmost obedience. That might seem natural since they are father and son. But, there was a time it exceeded the bounds of what it should have been. Julius averted his eyes from Subaru, as if speaking regretfully. The rel relationship, he had said, exceeded the bounds of a typical parent-child relationship. His words were vague enough that it was difficult to know what he had meant. However, Julius did not look eager to elaborate and returned his gaze to Subaru. As Reinhardt grew to be more self-reliant, that attitude should have disappeared. But without decisively knowing whether Reinhardt would still listen to Heigon Sama's words, those doubts could not be dissipated. So, to keep Heigon from giving Reinhardt an order to turn against the kingdom, Heigon was shown favor, right? Perhaps it was even worse than that. Although this is still a rumor that is considered heresy, I will tell you, because you are also Reinhardt's friend, and because he felt anger for his sake. With that troubling opening remark, Julius looked over their surroundings with a sweep. Confirming that there were no eavesdroppers, he stood close to Subaru's side. Then... The deputy commander was a suspect in the investigation of the abduction of the royal princess 14 years ago. <sighs> there was no conclusive evidence. However, he's been repeatedly questioned about suspected involvement. If that's true, then the abduction was- The truth of the matter is no longer relevant. Such a suspicious character in the position to command the kingdom's greatest military strength that is the crux of the problem now. The glorious blessing following the title of Sword Saint. However, as more and more of the situation came to light, Subaru began thinking the title to be more of a curse than blessing. However, if he really is related to the abduction, then Heinkel is the reason why his father and mother couldn't meet face to face one last time. That's not all. 
I have also heard that it was Heiko-sama who recommended that Teresia-sama, who had already set her blade aside, be the one to take his place in the great conquest against the White Whale. He actually sent his mother to battle against the White Whale?! There is an accurate record of this. The deputy commander refused to battle with the White Whale, and instead recommended that his mother, Teresia, do it. Utterly speechless, Subaru could not find it in himself to formulate a response. Unlike the unfounded rumor before, what Julius had just said was backed up by real evidence. Records and witnesses meant that this was fact. Heinkel had sent his own mother as his replacement to battle with the White Whale. That is to say, his mother subsequently died in battle, and his father took up the blade of revenge because he could not be with his mother in her last moments. However, rather than face any punishment, he used his son's talent as a shield to protect his comfortable and stable life. How could this be? How could there be a human who was capable of this? There... There has to be a mistake somewhere. Right? He did not want to believe it. It was not about wanting to believe in Heinkel's humanity. Subaru had already accepted him as the worst kind of person, and anyone who spoke to him could instantly tell. However, he was reluctant to admit that such evil beyond evil, such immorality, such depravity even existed. He hoped to believe in ethics, or honor, human nature, and thought that there was a limit to how much evil human nature could permit. However, things that would be a sin, even in imagination, could happen in reality. Apologies. That is not something I should have told someone who had not fully prepared themselves. Julius whispered to the speechless Subaru, his voice shuddered in gloom. Subaru could fully emphasize what the feelings with Julius's tone had given away, something which was entirely unlike the always calm and rational Julius. It's... it's not your fault. I was the one who wanted to hear about it. Although, <laughs> it would be a little easier if I could blame you. I am not in a position to accept your words. Obviously, what I, what I relate to you was just rumors about the business of another family. But I still spoke of them as if I had witnessed them myself. No matter how you look at it, I spoke without thinking of the gravity of those rumors. As a knight, I really should be ashamed. But, you witnessed it, didn't you? Since you're Reinhardt's friend. Subaru replied to Julius's self-deprecation. Julius, again, lifted his head towards Subaru, who nodded back at him. Although I don't know the specifics of your friendship with Reinhard, I can still see that you're worried about him, so I won't condemn your anger or call it too aggressive. I don't think it's right just to withdraw from something like that, solely because it's not your business. Then, what would you do? Is it wrong to interfere? If you hear others around you crying? If I saw my friend feeling hopeless, I'd certainly call to him. If you care about Reinhard, doing so would be completely natural. Especially since your feelings aren't like mine. If Julius were to interfere for nothing other than his curiosity, Subaru would regard him with contempt. However, Julius's feelings, as proven by both his attitude and his words in their exchange, were nothing so shameful. Didn't I just tell you? There's no need to adhere so rigidly to your knightly honor or whatever. And even if there is a need, occasionally taking off your armor and becoming Julie wouldn't be so bad. Who's to say that acting casually wouldn't lead to a better situation? Julie was the pseudonym Julius had given during the battle with the witch cult. Due to his position, Julius was unable to join any mercenary group so he had elegantly hidden his identity with a slightly falsified name. In the end, however, no one ended up using it, not even Julius himself. However, that Julius was the one least like a knight so far. 
Julie, huh? That is quite the nostalgic name. It was from so long ago, and it was only used once. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with myself for remembering it. There's no need to add heed so rigidly to your knightly honor or whatever. You have really stated some you have really stated some difficult things. I am sure you know what they all call me. It's because they've been calling you the greatest and whatnot that you've become so physically and mentally stiff. You should shed, shed that armor when you bathe and do some stretches with me before putting it back on. Subaru bent over, affixing his palms to the ground as if showing off his newfound flexibility. Although his body had been quite stiff before he had started leaning par started learning parkour, the first thing he did was to learn how to, to move with more softness and pliability. Then, to Subaru, who was showing off his flexibility... If you're trying to show me up, I really cannot do anything but sigh. Oh! As he spoke, Julius spread his legs apart and reached towards the ground. Subaru could not help but admire his control over his slender legs and the suppleness of his hips as he lowered himself to the ground. Was that to say that Julius could easily surpass Subaru in any area? Gah, but, but uh, if I were playing Lou Liar or sewing, I'd definitely win! Although I cannot see the merit of triumphing in hobbies, I have also taken up playing musical instruments. Although I would have to say that tailoring is fairly difficult. You really had to say it! Hobbies? A hobby held by a guy like you can't be anything but superficial. I'll never form a band with you! My lead singer role will be taken away! Julius unwound his feet and stood with a flourish. He suddenly flicked his bangs at Subaru, then smiled at the sky as if boasting a victory. I see. As Julie gazing at the sky and bathing in the wind feels like this. Eh? In retrospect, the sky I saw back then was also somewhat different from how it usually was. So this would be the reason. Then... Huh. You keep getting more and more unreasonable. <laughs> you fake bastard. Subaru shrugged his shoulders in annoyance and flopped onto the floor of the corridor. Julius narrowed his eyes, being dazzled by the sun, displaying a wry smile at Subaru's attitude. At last, the uncomfortable air surrounding their conversation has dispersed. Of course, what they had discussed was still lodged in their memory, and lumps still remain in their hearts. But, even so, they could at least work together at least work through their frustration together. Looking at the image from a distance, those two seemed like a pair of ordinary friends. And that wraps up the final chapter of this <laughs> reading. Wow. Fucking great That's job, cool. Wolf. Oh, <gasps> oh, I really hope I got the range of emotion across there. Oh, you did. Pog. It was a I pleasure. Was so good. That was so much fun, my god. It was a pleasure. Definitely, I love this chapter. Can so I just say, Kiki, Kiki, your narration there was amazing. What a chapter. Yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of things really in this well chapter. Narrated. There's a couple of things. Yeah. I took notes. Yeah, so, um, Heinkel, 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 White Ooh. Whale, oh. Wilhelm. <laughs> Automatically this. worse than Priscilla already. So, what you're telling me is, Heinkel is a certified Dickhead. cunt. Yes. Yeah? Douchebag. No, no, yeah. he is my father. No, no, oh, we should use up, proper. Oh, we should no. use no, no, no. We should use proper honorifics to title him Heinkel the Dickhead. You might. Do you begin Douche to understand now why, I... considering that that is Reinhardt's father, why he is the way he is? Well, so. that pretty much set it up as to be why. It, yeah. 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 Poor, poor, it's heavily suggested, I think, at that point that. I mean, he doesn't even call Reinhard by name properly when he first sees him. He calls him Sword Sane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He cares so little for him. I mean, the, I mean, from his perspective, the way he sees it, Reinhard killed his mother. Can I just say, <laughs> though, like, you doing your own voice, Wolf, for Subaru fits you so damn well. I know. I, mm -hmm. I was really worried about this chapter specifically because I'm not very confident with my anger. But honestly... You did fine. What the hell? <laughs> Reading, reading the line, reading the lines at the time, I was like, 
Oh god, just thinking about this bastard makes me angry. So that was pretty easy. When you <laughs> I like how You are I like how when we had those little cutoff points, we didn't wait for the line to finish, we just jumped in. Yeah, oh, well, I just felt like it felt more like a natural conversation at that point. Well, this is how you and I normally you. talk anyway. Yeah, this, so. is how, this, is, yeah <laughs> this is how me and you normally talk, so not much was different. <laughs> not much changed at all, really. But I I love this chapter specifically because it's it feels very much like the Wilhelm and Subaru chapter, right. except more... It just certifies that Julius and Subaru really are friends. And I hope I got that across in Subaru's last line where he calls him fake bastard like, <laughs> with a little bit of sex mentality. Because from my perspective, the way he's saying that is that although on the surface he's being the They're both type, headstrong. He it, they're both he sends headstrong. It with yeah. yeah. They're both too stubborn. Like, they can't admit that they're friends. I like probably. how the, so Julius basically insulted him, saying that he's going after no. Emilio only in his dreams. And then, and then Subaru <laughs> tried to fucking try to reverse Uno here, and then Juice is like, I'm not even interested in Anastasia. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Merely serving her for the Hoshin company. And it's, I just love it because it, it re this single chapter, we haven't seen a Julius and Subaru dynamic in proper, like, long dynamics. Well, the dynamic last time we have so, is so Arc 3, yeah. probably. Yeah. And yeah. it really just sets up that even a year apart, from each other these guys just they have the same have banter. <laughs> banter relationship yeah i love it i love their relationship it's probably my favorite relationship in re-zero honestly i like how i like how super it feels so real to life because i i talk to a lot of my friends this way you know like this this kind of chummy passive aggressive annoyance for me it was it's, it's so hard to talk as julius because he's indifferent like 99 percent of the times yeah talks. which means when you emote you have to he's take, it's difficult, yeah. he's a very stoic boy so it was good that i played a character that you were actually like aiding to emote because holy shit and i think that's a big contrast between them right i mean it even it even shows that to the main speech of what subaru the main point subaru makes this chapter right when yeah. he tells Julius it's okay to be himself, he doesn't have to be this perfect knight all the time. I mean, what he's essentially saying to Julius here, because he's a Sundere, is that just talk to me <laughs> like I'm your fucking friend, because we're here alone. You I'm don't need knight. to put up your phone. I'm a knight. We can be, we can be buddy buddy. Nickname statuses. <laughs> I was legit close to like uh, tears when like uh, when he looked up at the sky and was like. Ah, so this is like what it looks like as Julie. I, Kiki, the way you narrated that was beautiful, uh, by the way. It like, was so good, Kiki. I'm so I, glad I that we. The scene in my head. I'm so, I'm so glad, glad that we read did. this chapter today because I think yeah. Julius fucks off for like another ten or twelve chapters yeah, after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what see I will say Yeet. is this okay. chapter has definitely fulfilled my uh, my need for Julius content. What's up, Brado? Did you and Did you and Hollow practice this no. together? No, like you said you no, would. No. no. Wow, See, it was really good for no practice. We, we read it once we before, though, it. but it was it We've was so meme. It was so meme when we read it once. Yeah, first unfortunately, time. see, I didn't have much experience voicing Super at the time, and neither did um, Hollow with Julius. And we were also doing the narration and all the voices, so we were fucking exhausted. Was I narrating this one? I think you might. It was either I, it might have been you. I think because I had was it gold. It oh, I came gold. in. Well, I came in next chapter because that's when it starts. Actually, no, maybe I didn't read that chapter. I forgot. I, I, I go back and look. I particularly remember, to be honest with you. I know Gold uh, uh, came in around that time. I go should be mm. put on CPS. <laughs> he should. Oh my God. I mean, if you like, it's it's honestly, but I and this is my favorite thing about to pay's character writing, right? Like the way the character acts, it's so true to how they would feel. <laughs> Because of how these characters act towards them, right? Like, right. Heinkel derided and abused Reinhard throughout his entire childhood, basically telling him he's responsible for his grandmother's I'm, death. I'm gonna clarify and, one thing. Sorry, Chad is saying I'm just here for the next five weeks to stream. I have to voice Lollicon Boy, so I have a purpose for one chapter. Maybe congratulations, two. <laughs> you get to be yourself. What? I have a purpose. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got him. Back on the topic of the chapter, I wanted to hear what notes Kyle put down yeah, if she wanted yeah, to share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hear the notes. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was just typing them up now. Uh, that saves me so much time. <laughs> um. Okay. So I guess I have two big points. The first one 
Is knowing ReZero they'll find a way to make us sympathetic to aspects of Heinkel's life? Similar to Beetlegoose? Um, they'll find a way. And I'm I'm already mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing those laps, uh, yep, that's gonna come up. Don't and be suspicious. And the second one, don't be mm. suspicious. Uh, second one is Subaru pushing Julius to reconsider his position on things, so I'm hoping to see some growth in Julius to be a little more reckless or just a little more outspoken because it seems like Julius definitely has some feelings about the corruption in the military but is trying to maintain his status. Yeah, um, cuz so Subaru cool to see if Subaru pushes. Mm, yeah, cuz they have this like do du not duality like they they're complete opposites in that sense. Subaru is can be irrational and blurts out his feelings instantly and Julius is the complete opposite. So I love their dynamic in that they both are flawed and have a lot to learn from each other even though it seems like Julius is like, you know, so much better. They can perfect. both still learn from each other and grow. I this this mirrors Subaru's development that was caused by Julius in Arc 3, right? Subaru went from completely irrational and not being able to think of others to now being able to control it somewhat, but still having to hone it because he he just can't throw away his feelings. He's too honest with himself. Now it's kind of switched, right? Subaru has to teach Julius mm. that you don't just have to put on a facade, right? You, you can be yourself sometimes, even mm. when you have to act all high and mighty. I mean, this even delves deeper into a really deep part of Subaru's character, which is, I mean, even now, not as much, but before, he put on a facade before, right? He put on the facade of who he wanted to be, like his dad, right? He wanted to be the most amazing. And he, he sees that part of Julius putting on the, uh, the ideal greatest knight facade, and it pisses him off. It's what makes him angry. Can we right. just... Can we just go over the fact that Wolf playing Subaru fits so well, because you fully understand the psychological like the mindset of Subaru. Yeah. That is a that is a huge benefit to me, I will say, yeah, because I've I analyze a lot of Subaru so much, I can kind of just tell how he's emoting during a scene, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So proud of my night. <laughs> yeah That's me, not fair, my candidate's <laughs> not here. The best ah, thing the <laughs> oh, is that a oh. oh my god, Kiki, you just do a fucking voice is amazing. What else did you have <laughs> from your notes? Uh oh my god, let me look at them. I just shoved them away. Oh, Come that was back very to me. Just say. <laughs> oh yes, my when you were saying how he was actually like he we could get to relate to him a bit more i think we saw a little bit of that when we mentioned that he didn't have the von in his name mm -hmm. yeah he got I mean, like a bit of what was on it what did it say it was like regret on his face or he just looked a bit troubled more so was it but it, yeah it's it seems like it was subaru saying that specifically really pissed him off because mm -hmm. when when he's really angry he, he gets kind of silent and he thinks because when he's when he's surface level angry, he's just spitting nasty shit at people. But when you say something that hits him deeply, he will tend to go silent. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm um, I mean, Heinkel is a very very interesting character, and once we complete this arc, I will be very interested into what all of you think of him. Ha! Kill him. Oh gosh. <laughs> it might it might be a metal use might... to where in the next arc or after that will get more insight on him as a character and find out what happened. Let me Honestly, make a bet right now. Be... Let's make a straight bet. If Heinkel has okay. character redemption, I will give away five of something. I don't know what. Five something. <laughs> that, that's, that's very vague. It could lead you down a deep rabbit hole of death. <laughs> I'll give you five head pats. Five head pats to one audience. Yeah! Better. Five head well, only, pats? What, five head pats? You only will give five head pats? <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> yes, only worth five I'm head sorry, Beko, I'm sorry. <laughs> God. That sounds like something Beko would be, do like. Continue, Kyle. <laughs> I only have two notes one that's kind of like serious notes, and then one that's just off the wall. So I'll do the serious one first. <laughs> Maybe it was just something I missed in the past. But I didn't like fully put two and two together. I knew Felt was a, a final That's candidate, good. and I knew there was background. Okay. But I didn't realize that Felt was abducted in childhood. So I was like, wait, I don't, what? I don't think it's confirmed What's happening that here? she's 
the the child that was abducted, but it's widely believed that that's okay. her. And that shows why she's able to be considered as a candidate, and that's the reason why Reinhardt's the one who is, you know, backing her. Because mm -hmm. thinking about it, like, his history with this, like, candidate that got missing, you know, this one member of the royal family that was missing, mm -hmm. Reinhardt has a lot of emotions attached to that event, you know, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, his idea of, like, making sure that she's protected and safe makes a whole lot of sense. It's like he's, like, making up for something that he he didn't do in the past, perhaps. Mm -hmm. One of his lines, everything I do is that. for the sake of atonement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there's a real yeah. tragedy to Reinhardt's character in particular because, I mean, Subaru even mentions it, right? Like, those sword same lessons he used to be envious of, he now comes to understand that's more of a curse, right? A bit... A bit like how you'd think initially having returned by death would be some sort of blessing, right? Like, oh, it's amazing. I, I'm basically immortal. Like, on the surface, okay. it seems amazing, but the, the consequences and the deep psychological stuff that comes with that really isn't. Reinhard is... You know, Reinhard and Subaru, once you get to know their dynamic a bit more and understand them both as characters, you'll begin to understand how symmetrical they are as characters, mm -hmm. even though they're so different in power levels and... Um, positions and even like origins they're very similar people striving for a very similar thing i will say um and i definitely like learning regarding reinhardt's character i think after next weekend's reading i did put a video out about like the mentality of reinhardt after that certain point so if we hit yeah, that when you read it first time yeah yeah so it kind of delves into like a first impression and little explanation on it but don't read it now it's spoilers don't do it kyle's please uh oh yeah by the way okay. next next like 12 chapters is gonna be a, a trip it's gonna sure. be a fucking yeah. trip i might well, actually have to practice welcome gc that. typo to synarch bishops holy sh lounge is invading my my streams it's gonna yeah, literally we're gonna have to practice as well wink <laughs> <laughs> and I now think... comment to derail it all all right <laughs> uh actually by the way that felt whole situation that's what got me to start writing notes but um the author is uh like really really pushing those yaoi tropes as oh, how God. he's explaining julius bending over and <laughs> oh yeah i am gonna be honest right <laughs> I remember when <laughs> reading this initially and thinking, what, why is this up there? Why is there a whole Subaru Julius ship? And then rereading this today as well as reading the lines, I, I noticed the hit one. Oh my yeah. god. So Tapay is actually pushing this subtly. What if I see one goddamn piece of artwork with my OC and Wolf's OC, I'll cry. Don't do it. Stop. <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you say that's gonna be encouraging. There's no, three god. artists in the chat right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I won't do anything, I promise. Oh, there's four. <laughs> <Right enough. laughs> yeah. I can totally to I can totally see Julius walking up to Subaru and like flicking his bangs and being like, I am flamboyous. Just going up to him and saying random shit that are emulating that. I can thing. imagine Subaru responding, You're fabulous. Wait, somebody made Wolfiana? Like, Show me. Like, Show oh, me. No. Wolfiana? Question mark? Oh god. Wolfiana! Wolfiana! So, er, Wolf's, oh, yeah, Wolf showed Wolf's up. impression, forgot, was, Wolf's impression of Liliana is so gonna basically lower the hate for Liliana down to zero. Yeah. I mean, I, I tried to make her annoying in such a way that she's endearing, if that makes sense. Like she's just so stupid and <laughs> and bombastic that she's basically a child. You can't really hate her. Yes, you can. Because she. <laughs> well, I, I'm more annoyed by her than I hate her. I don't think she's a bad character at all. Even. You forget she what happened with me and Maylee. Well. You forget what happened oh, with yeah. me and Maylee in Arc 4. Three meals a day, no peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe they, they cut that line from the fucking anime. God damn it, it was, it. It was so one of the funniest lines good. of Arc 4. So, so <laughs> for some context, um, Maylee at the end of Arc 4, she doesn't really show up after <laughs> Frederica kidnaps her. From Elsa, but um, oh yeah, her. At, at, at the end, she 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 mentions that um, she can't really say anything about her employer, <laughs> and they capture her, and, she, and she's like, oh no, Elsa's dead. I don't really care. Anyway, basically, you can keep me as long as you want. Just give me three meals a day with no peppers. <laughs> well, fucking <you>, general. 
Oh, <laughs> oh my oh, god! Oh, this! Oh! What? My eyes! Yes. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh. I'm disappointed. I thought it was gonna be like a full-on fan art. SMH. Oh, I can do that. Yay. I can do that. I can do that. Pabo's asking how we want uh, Wolf to be drawn in um, the chat. Draw him like Liliana, give him the Liliana body, but then put Subaru's head on it. Oh Make it as cursed God. as you can. Oh, that is so cursed. <laughs> <laughs> if There's you're gonna make it a bit lighter, then at least give it blonde hair. I, I, I have a like direct it. counter to this. I have the most blessed image I have ever I'm oh, gonna... show me a blessed image. Well, will me. this get me terminated mm, because have, Liliana like, doesn't wear clothes? Like, what the... I'm, I'm... Those are... Those, those are... Those are clothes. Those, those, those are literally handmade Oh my god, it's a dictator. Put this on the screen, please. Everyone needs to see this. Oh, Kyle's. Kyle's. We will abolish everything. Wait, you have to voice her when I put her up. Wait, Kyle's. Wait, wait, wait. Yo. Let's get Liliana out of here, please. Get her away. Kill it with fire. I am Liliana. All right, ready? It is on the screen. It is now? Okay, good, good, good. Okay. My name's Amelia. I am your new queen. And... I want you to make sure you eat all your vegetables sometimes. Hmm. Oh, little Amelia, that is so cute. How do you do voices so well? What the fuck? I'm a voice actor. Nice. Really? Holy I couldn't crap. have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is a good point. Someone in the someone in the comments mentions that a lot of like the Yowie bait with Julius and Subaru is coming from Subaru's perspective because we're following his perspective. Yes, yeah, right. Subaru, actually, you don't even know this. Subaru has thoughts all the time that are basically like, "Wow, this guy's actually kind of good looking," or "Wow, this guy's." I mean, yeah, hot. he mentions like fucking seven times in this chapter. Flicks my bangs. Fucking <laughs> handsome. How yeah. The fuck do you flick your bang? Oh, I'm gonna try it. Wait. It sounds so. If anyone's going after anyone here, it's Subaru. Mm -hmm. Subaru has a It's so weird. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, Subaru's quite an interesting. I mean, <laughs> he, he he became Natsumi Schwartz for some time, so I, I suppose Whoa, he's a bit more a flexible. Spoiler. No, I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, that, that's your fault for not letting us finish My Fair Bad Lady, bro. We tried, and it was like a year and a half long. And that's. It's okay. beautiful, though. Listen, listen. Five hundred dollars. We read lust if five dollars. Oh, five hundred dollars. <laughs> God, I, I can, I can be, I can be human Subaru. I cannot be harem protagonist Subaru. That, that, I can't fit Come that role. Come here, sorry. felt uwu. Uh... Come here, felt uwu. Oh no, Petra, that's what are you doing to felt? <laughs> well, I don't know. We're around the same age. Oh my god. This is oh fucking cursed. God. This is cursed. This is cursed. <laughs> yeah. This is cursed. Yeah. I think if Subaru actually saw that even in the last day, he'd just be like, fuck this shit, I'm out. No, he's not. Nope. He's like, fuck this shit, I'm in. I'll be right back, guys. Like carry the combo for a oh. second. Oh, you fucker, come back. <laughs> oh, my back. Oh, conversation. <laughs> yeah, we're carrying this, this stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we're carrying this stream like always. Oh, <laughs> no. <God. laughs> it's Please a team effort for all of our backs. I mean, I, I, I can't really speak for Hollow here, but what I will say is that we're just focusing on Arc 5 at the moment. Uh, we'll see where it goes after, I guess. Well, so. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're planning to do Arc 5 and then Arc 6, pretty much straight then up. Then Lustif. And then we're going to create... Lustif! And then after we do Arc 7, we are going to create Arc 8 ourselves. Oh yeah, yeah. Arc 7 like, does... We're going to write the up. best fanfiction you've Funnily never enough, seen. I have published books before. So... Oh yeah? Let's, wow. uh, let's uh, try. Oh yeah, didn't you didn't you self-admit to them being shite, though? They were gar I wrote them in high school, but the premise of the story was good. The execution was awful. I wrote half of it on my phone. Oh, but so okay, kind of like, I wrote it. Yeah, well, <laughs> my ideas were great. It's yeah. just that yeah. it's just my execution was really bad. I don't know if that's being prideful or being humble. I can't tell. We could probably that's write Arc Arc Eight. We could probably write Arc Arc Eight. I'm not gonna lie, just like a parody like, version of Arc Eight. Oh, what a really, really fucked, cursed version of Arc Eight. I'd probably do that. 
I mean, Arc 7 isn't even finished yet. We can't really do that. Can I kill <laughs> Melee if we go into Arc 8, please? No! No, you no. can't! Why? Why do you kill She's she awful! Awesome. We like Melee. Melee the day. I hate no Melee. peppers! How can you not love her after that statement? Kyle's announced yourself as a new dictator of Hollow's channel. In what voice? Little Amelia? <laughs> yeah. I could do Little Amelia. I mean, the song. What is trying that? Trying to get everyone added to. Hee hee What the? Ree hee hee. I, Kyle's, will take over Hollow's channel. Slowly but surely. Does that mean oh. I don't have to upload anymore? Ree cool. I, I've Ding. given you some. Amelia, finally. I don't have to do it. <laughs> I'll just collect <laughs> the subscribers. <laughs> Slot man. Oh, this 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 stream's been fucking fun. My God. Yeah. You're so happy when he left. Follow, by the way. No, I'm joking. Oh, he was. I could oh, hear everything back. you were saying. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Get baited, idiots. <laughs> Get you baited, dumbass. <laughs> Get ratioed. Throws toast in mouth Throws. and runs. I mean, I think this stream is going to end off pretty well. Hollow's Tape, I can't write that good. Hell no. You think I can write characters? <laughs> Please. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Dude, is this, do it, is this, is this, is this a Naruto arc? I'm going to get a coup, coup d'etat done on my channel. Yeah. Yeah, motherfucker. We're doing it. Stop giving Hollow a way out. No, please. I'm out of ideas for content. Please give me a way out. <laughs> <laughs> please, please give me more content. Please, I, I am, I'm creatively bankrupt. Please. Help. When, are, when are we doing we that? Uh... Videos on the live dubs. Yeah, we could. When are we doing that episode Ooh. tier list thing? Oh, yes. we can do that um, as like a random weekly stream, or if we don't, yeah, do that sounds reading. fun. That works. Sense, yeah. Julius and his childbearing hips. <laughs> mm, yes. Me and my childbearing hips. I follow Anastasia Ooh. Sama's lead. Get ratioed, idiot. I'm At that moment, desk. Subaru questioned his sexuality. Hollow say R R. Oh. Hollow say R R. Like <laughs> Kyle. Ada Ada. R R Julius. Oh my God. Ada oh, Ada, Ada, Ada Mr. Squidward. <laughs> Dog good ReZero fanfiction. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but finding good ReZero fanfiction is hard to find. Let me recommend one. Re life. <laughs> no. Oh, he said good. He said good. Oh, good. Um. Uh. 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 Re Kingdom. I've only read like two or three decent ones. <clears throat> so we're gonna probably end the stream right around here. Yeah. Does anybody want probably... to say anything before we head out, or are we just all going to yeah, collectively I'll say, say bye before we head out? Cool. Oh. Next few. Oh. Streams. Someone just said Vue say ara ara in unison, please. We'll do that. Oh. We'll do that when we leave. What's yeah, up, we'll Gold? <laughs> okay. So yeah, for the next few streams, things are going to be back to almost where we left off. I mm -hmm. think um, about 10, 12 chapters. Close. Ten. So like two weeks from now, maybe. I guess like after the next we'll sessions of readings. And then we'll be caught back up. So, uh, depending on how many chapters we end up doing. But some of these chapters coming up aren't even that long, I don't think. Maybe no, this was a bulk like. of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. This is the majority of the work out right, right here, right? Here we go, everyone. Thank you all for stopping by. Give a big hand to the VAs. Big hand to Jace for helping with the sound department. Everybody who was on today. We're all going to do collective cringe because that's what you guys want us to do. This has been Holographic and Friends signing out. Bye. And we're all going to collectively say ara ara because I don't know why. All right. A two. One, two, three, two. go. Ada, 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 I suppose. Ada, ada, <laughs> see you next time. Bye. 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 Johnny. Johnny. <laughs>